Okay, and you're live. All right, well, uh, Council, uh, uh, welcome back. Uh, we have, of course, had a little bit of a delay here. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties uh, after concluding our in-camera session, and uh, we were able to work with our IT department and our clerk's office, and we're now uh, able to continue with the meeting. So uh, we do have a full agenda. Uh, it's apologized if we're a little bit late. Uh, the time right now is, uh, I guess it's four minutes to six, so we're, I guess, 25 minutes uh, behind for where we had initially said we would have been. So, nevertheless, we are here, so happy to uh, continue with the meeting. and. Uh, Everyone is here. We also have our staff uh, that are uh, in the background here on this uh, this web webinar. So we'll call upon their resources when we need it. Council, our agenda is item number two, which is the approval of the agenda. So recommendation be it resolved that council the township clearly hereby approve the agenda dated June the twenty second, twenty twenty, as presented. Uh, mover and seconder, please. And that would be Mr. Lamers and uh, Councillor Deneen. Uh, is there any amendments to the agenda or any changes? Yes, Deputy Mayor? Yeah, request to speak, very good. Uh, unfortunately, you're muted there, sir. If you could unmute, thank you. Hello. Yes, uh, I'm, I would ask that the uh, Village Green uh, presentation and issue be brought forward at the beginning of the meeting, please. All right, uh, how about we put it, um, in place of deputations and presentations, because we have none. So it'll come in following our public participation. Does that seem reasonable, folks? That sounds like the perfect spot for it. Thank you, Your Worship. Very good. Okay. Any objections? Nothing? Seeing none? Anybody else with anything else in the agenda? Tonight's agenda? All right, seeing none, you've heard the motion for the agenda as amended by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Very good. At and item number three is our disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Any members of council have a, a disclosure in regards to any content on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, if you have anything that uh, comes up during the meeting, please speak and we will deal with it at that time. Now we have item number four, which is public participation period. As you know, public participation period is normally held in our council chambers where members of the public can come forward and speak directly to councillors and, uh, and council. Uh, as we are doing this by webinar and by Zoom during this COVID crisis, people are asked to send in their comments by written form, of which we uh, have received a few today, Council. So at this time, I'm going to review some of the uh, public participation comments, and I may draw upon some of our staff to uh, help me answer some of these questions. Um, first of all, I want to recognize that uh, item 4.1, Four, three, and four, four. Uh, Mr. Bolt, Mr. Galler, and Ms. Weaver have all brought up concerns in regards to speed and speed limits and speeding in the uh, in the community. Um, unfortunately, this is something that has been occurring in our community and uh, continues to to happen. We have, uh, you may recall, Council. We had a recent meeting where we had a representative of the OPP, a staff sergeant, to banks attend and give us a bit of an update on some of the processes and programs that they are doing. Um, so I want to say that we recognize that, uh, and it is a problem. So um, we're trying to work with our OPP. Uh, I just want to answer some of these questions uh, quickly if I can. Uh, for Mr. Bolt's question, speed limits are, and most of our rural areas are set at 80 kilometers per hour. Council does have some ability to reduce speed limits, but we do not enforce the Highway Traffic Act, that's the OPP. And so I would encourage you to contact the OPP at 1-888-310-1122. If you see or observe anybody breaking the law or speeding, that's the best thing you can do because they uh, need to hear that directly from the residents. And so I appreciate your, your question and uh, your suggestion. Mr. Gala, uh, or Galler has uh, asked a um, similar question. Um, I'd like to comment to him by saying police will respond uh, and do uh, do traffic patrols in our communities. And further, if you see traffic issues or any other infraction, to please call the OPP at 1-888-310-1122. Um, and just for clarity, that phone number is directly to the OPP. It's a, they consider it a non-emergency line, uh, but it is directly to their dispatchers and they then communicate directly to the officers in the field. 
uh, with that phone number. So that's the best way to make a traffic complaint. Uh, for Ms. Weaver, the concession seven question, it's also very similar to that. Uh, one of her questions was in regards to our speed radar signs. If I may, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, Mr. Perot, uh, Dan Perot, I believe is on one of our staff members. He's here with us. Mr. Perot, could you join me for a moment and uh, advise about the deployment of our speed radar signs and what they're doing? And, and I know we've done some recent uh, moving the signs around a little bit. No, oh, there's Dan. Got an interesting background. Nice to see you. Hello, Dan. Uh, I know that we've done a little bit of changing when it comes to our signs. Could you perhaps just give me an update, give council a bit of an update on some of the, the work that's gone on there with our radar signs? Well, certainly, Your Worship. Um, as council may be aware, uh, back for the 2020 budget, we or council approved a um, number of signs to be purchased uh, as of last week. Uh, most of those signs had been installed in the different communities. <clears throat> that left, uh, that leaves us with uh, four that we move around. Uh, unfortunately, two were stolen just recently off uh, concession 10. Um, they, ha they have been reported to the OPP. Unfortunately, it's not looking like we will see those again. So we're left with two signs that we move around at different locations. And uh, as council could imagine, we have a, a bit of a list that, that we're trying to get through. Um, some locations are easier than others. So we are uh, moving them around as, as the, the calls come in and the locations you know, uh, are requested for information. Um, so that's basically where we stand right now. With the, with the speed radar signs. Thank you very much, Mr. Perot. And that, uh, that data, of course, uh, is collected and used as part of our traffic uh, study and traffic management uh, studies. Um, certainly, uh, Council looks forward to hearing more about that in the future. So uh, I appreciate uh, all the work you're doing to get those signs safely put out there. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dan. Um, Item 4.2 is a, uh, a question from Mr. Waldy. It's in regards to ATVs in Clearview Township. Um, Mr. Waldy is to be commended for uh, uh, reaching out to his community and asking for support through uh, a petition that he has performed or putting together. And so I, uh, I thank him for that. Um, so I have a few things I wanna say in regards to uh, his question in regards to ATV use on Clearview Township roads. Uh, I wanted to know, first of all, council hears you about the ATV uh, in Clearview. Clearview Township does have routes for ATV users to access county forests and to drive through our community. Uh, your request is being considered by councillors, and I can assure you that there is a motion that is being uh, considered by some members of this council, and uh, the uh, members of this council will be working on that. I do not know when that will come forward, but I suspect um, by the work of your councillors that they will uh, bring this forward at, uh, and present it to the clerk. It'll be on a future agenda. Um, something though that also we need to mention is that the province is continuing to indicate that the issue of ATVs on public roads is being brought up at the legislature. Um, so I would ask Mr. Waldy to please be patient to ride safely on our roads, on our designated roads, and uh, understand that uh, council is hearing him. And, uh, and we look forward to having this discussion again in the future about ATV use on our roads. Um, number four, five is a, a question from Mr. Lomath. Um, Mr. Lomath is, uh, was concerned about uh, uh, potential use of chemicals in our public park areas and uh, staff uh, applying, uh, as, as he describes, chemicals. Um, I've done some investigating on this today and actually I learned something um, about uh, what is uh, actually being applied at very limited areas in our municipality. It turns out that we use a product called a horticultural vinegar and dish soap. If you Google it, it's on the internet. Horticultural vinegar, it's a vinegar product, it is not harmful. Uh, and dish soap is also not harmful. The, uh, the blend is mixed together. It, uh, it does sort of look like a kind of a green blue colored mix. Um, the mixture is used to control weeds and plants and uh, anything that's considered noxious. 
some of my research indicates it's actually very good at getting rid of poison ivy, which of course we don't want in our community. So uh, the horticultural vinegar is not banned under the Provincial Herbicide Pesticide Act. And uh, of note, you should know, Mr. Lomath, that uh, Clearview Township uh, does have staff that are valid exterminator licensed uh, users for the underneath the Chemical Act or the Horticultural Act or the Herbicide and Pesticide Act. That's the one. Um, however, it's not required when dealing with vinegar as a product that, that is being applied. So uh, we are. I'm satisfied that we are doing the right thing when it comes to this uh, this use of this product, and uh, just wanted to leave it at that. Um, item 4.6 is also a question from Mr. Lomath in regards to uh, the publishing of minutes. If Madam Clerk, if you would take a moment and join me just for just to confirm something for me. That is that the minutes are uh, approved uh, of all of our meetings, whether they be the board meetings or this council meeting. Minutes are approved uh, at the following meeting generally. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? That's where we approve minutes? Yes, that's correct. So what has happened is there's been a little bit of a lag time because of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the minutes are published on the council agenda. Um, so they are available to the public and the final copies after they've been signed by yourself and, and, and myself as clerk, they're, they are then posted. Um, but certainly the minutes themselves are there and I believe that they have been updated. So there was, we were too behind in posting, but I think that's been rectified. Thank you very much. And, uh, and that's correct. I was just gonna finish that by saying um, in these last weeks, uh, none of us as counselors have been working from the administration center. None of us as mayor or deputy mayor have been working from the event center. Um, however, the requirements of actually signing uh, bylaws into law and signing any of our minutes is still required and I have dropped in on Saturday mornings and uh, you know signed some of the uh, documents that are required to uh, to get that done and um, there might be some delay in that between the clerk the deputy clerk uh, collecting that information from my office desk so uh, that's uh, that's why that has been happening certainly in the past um, the next morning the material is usually on my desk and the next morning it would all be signed. So that's uh, that's that's my answer to question four, six. I have a, another uh, public participation question that comes from Mr. Witzke, item four, seven. Um, this question is regarding, uh, uh, I guess, the condition of a lot that's uh, under development uh, right on 26 in, in Stainer. Um, and it's in regards to uh, the condition of the lot as far as weeds or overgrowth of grass. Um, so the, the question is about bylaw enforcement. And uh, it's interesting, bylaw enforcement is not directed by council. Uh, bylaw enforcement officers are staff and they use their best judgment and uh, their professionalism to deliver uh, the by or to administer the bylaws and they perform their work uh, to both in, uh, enforce and to prosecute uh, Clearview and provincial legislation as of recently during this COVID-19, they're required to do some of that work too. So uh, just to be clear, the bylaw enforcement team is not directed by council. So they, uh, they are, um, of course, enforcing where they can. And unfortunately, they've been very busy. Um, another thing about bylaws I want to state to answer Mr. Witzke's question is that all persons, all residents, and visitors to Clearview Township are subject to our bylaws. So there should be no uh, you know, preferential treatment offered to anyone um, when it comes to bylaw enforcement. And so I think that um, Mr. Whiskey's questions in regards to uh, uh, derelict vehicles and so on uh, needs to be properly investigated by our bylaw enforcement team. And uh, I would be very supportive of whatever the bylaw enforcement team come forward with as they would have to uh, defend that in front of a judge uh, if necessary. So that's, uh, that's really all I have to say uh, about the, uh, the questions. Um, for the purposes of counsel, uh, I'll get to you in a second there, Mr. McKechnie. For the purposes of counsel, I just wanna add that uh, it's, um, it's frustrating, I could appreciate for members of the public to have to write their questions and send them in and hope that they're going to receive direct answers like this when 
it's just as easy to ask the question, to write to myself, write to members of council or staff or council, we can help you out and answer some of your questions. Um, I don't know if this process is actually really uh, healthy in the, in the way we're doing this. It does allow public participation for sure. Uh, and I believe in that, but I'm more concerned that these type of uh, letter writing and, and question posing is, is actually counterproductive to good communications with the public. And so it's difficult uh, so we're all in difficult times right now during this COVID. It's difficult right now to conduct this meeting, to be quite frank. And uh, so we're doing the best we can. And I hope that the public participation period, when we return to the chambers, we'll be able to continue where members can join us in chambers and speak directly to us. So that's my comment. Mr. McKechnie, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, I just have a couple of uh, questions and uh, one comment. So basically, uh, we have been getting a lot of questions regarding uh, speeds and uh, and such, and I know I see it in my ward. I was out in the new Lowell area today checking out a couple of these roads that uh, people were complaining about uh, uh, as well. Beautiful roads, lovely uh, there. And uh, But uh, Mr. Uh, Gallers road that he's complaining about, uh, he never put a road in there. Is that... Uh, uh, does anyone know if there's any one particular road that he is complaining about or is that just the township in general? So that's one question. Uh, second one would be, uh, is just more or less a comment uh, regarding the minutes. You know, I, you know, I, I, I can appreciate it's, uh, it can be a little bit frustrating. I know even for me, sometimes it takes you like 10, uh, 10 days before we get the minutes uh, from the previous meeting because they, they come out on the agenda of the new meeting. But uh, this format that we're uh, in right now, uh, being able to look on YouTube and everything, I just find it great. I've been uh, going back into YouTube and uh, just checking out some of the uh, things that were said. And because uh, I have to admit, sometimes I even get confused. At the end of the meeting, you know, a couple of days goes by and I'm thinking, what did we agree on there? So it's really great that we can go back on YouTube and just see exactly what was said. And uh, I also find the cream or echo are pretty good at, uh, at uh, you know, uh, uh, bringing me up to speed. I, re I read that every Friday and uh, they're very good. Uh, but then also my last question would be under bylaw enforcement. And I agree that uh, we do not direct bylaw. And uh, I was in support, full support of the hiring of a second bylaw officer and uh, that and bylaw being proactive rather than reactive. Just wondering, do you happen to know uh, your worship when the next, uh, uh, when bylaw will be coming to council again with, with their next report, with an update for us? How often does that take place? Do they come every six months, every three months? Um, any idea? Every year? Uh, those are um, new questions anyway. Sure. Uh, uh, Doug, I'll try to answer some of those questions. I do not know where Mr. Galler's uh, direct concern is, but he certainly referenced uh, roads in and around the New Lowell area. Uh, so, uh, if you look at concession seven, as well as the uh, question about the 1213, they're all in the new Lowell area. So to be fair, they're all in the rural areas and, and all of our community is rural. So much of our community is rural. They're, they're, we've got speeders happening on every road. So I don't think you need to get a specific address on it. Certainly it's a frustration. I agree. Um, yeah, and, and I also agree, by the way, with the, the YouTube uh, videos. I think this is a, a good way of remaining connected with the residents and uh, provide them that opportunity to, uh, to see and, and, and visit with your counselors and, uh, and, and see what's happening. I, I do believe, however, that it's, uh, it's better positioned when you're in an actual room together. Uh, if you look at the basics of communications, communications are, are best done in person. And uh, I think that's the best way that we can continue. Uh, but I do believe that we're moving towards a, uh, a new reality. So who knows? Who knows, Mr. McKechnie? We might be in virtual reality before long, and then we'll be able to look around the whole room. So <laughs> anyway, I'm not uh, trying to just discard your message, but I certainly appreciate it. Now, in regards to bylaw, uh, Madam Clerk, we generally receive a report from our senior bylaw officer once a year, with an update on activities as well as uh, any uh, large uh, enforcement programs that he's been uh, here, the staff have been involved with. So when would we be seeing another bylaw report? Yes, so there's a statistical report that's done once every six months. So it should be coming in the next month or so. 
And, uh, and then sometimes we, we do hold a closed session with council to talk about particular properties um, that we may be dealing with. And obviously specific properties we wouldn't address in open session um, with regard to uh, how we're handling those specific complaints. So you can expect that there will be a statistics report coming up in the next month or so. And by law enforcement will be um, either zooming in here or we'll be live in the council chambers to uh, answer any questions that council may have about their activities. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good, Councilor McKechnie. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm looking forward to the uh, in-camera uh, report. I think uh, it will be interesting to see the various properties that they're dealing with. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So that concludes uh, the public participation portion. Uh, my comments are still uh, standing that uh, the public, of course, are always welcome to contact me at any time. If they wish, I can do my best to respond to you with an answer, or uh, you can use the opportunity to use public participation and use the form online. So uh, either way, we'll uh, we're continue to try to communicate the best we can. We're all in this together, folks. All right, uh, item five is deputations, but there are no deputations. And we did amend the agenda to bring forward the Village Green report. So if we scroll down to uh, your Department of Defense Council, which I believe is the bottom of page three. Yes, it's PCR 011-2020, the Cremor Village Green Project. So uh, Mr. Vashon has joined us. So I would like to read this, put this in the, on the floor. We'll look for a mover and seconder and then we'll ask for Terry to do a report. Okay, council. It is a recommend recommendation be resolved that council of the township review hereby one, uh, receive PCR 011-2020, the Cremore Village Green Project Report for information. And out of two, Clearview Township hereby approve the Cremore Village Green designs as presented excluding the approval of the spray pad components of the project. All right, moving to second, uh, the Councillor Patterson and a seconder. Uh, the Councillor Broderick is the seconder. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, first of all, Councillor, this has been a, what a project. <laughs> I'm glad we're finally here. And I imagine, uh, Mr. Vashon, you've had uh, lots of meetings that you didn't even tell us about. So. This is a great report, and uh, I look forward to, to hearing your, uh, your comments on it. Terry, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a long road. We've, we've been working with the uh, Creamore Community Foundation now for um, probably a, a good five months. Um, you'll notice on me. Can you speak louder, Terry? You're hard to hear. Speak louder. Please. Sorry about that. Is that better? Get right in there, Terry. Thank you. Sorry about that. Go right okay. ahead. So yeah, so I'll just repeat what I said, Your Worship, if that's okay. Um, so yeah, so we've been working with the Creamore Community Foundation for the uh, good last five months, coming up with their final design that you see in my, in my report. I think it's on the last page of the report. Um, so they've come a long way from what was earlier presented last year uh, versus what's presented today. Um, we've, been, we've pretty much crossed all our T's and dotted all our I's on this project. Um, we as, a, as the department feel very uh, comfortable and confident that the project that you see in front of you is, uh, is going to be the final design. Uh, we've left out the spray pad component. Um, it's, we, we need to do a little bit more uh, work on that component, uh, which is okay. There's a little bit of technical um, uh, uh, issues that we need to, to look at with our, with our senior team and our, and our engineers. But uh, all in all, again, very good project. If you go by Cremor today, you'll see that the, uh, obviously the, the former bank is no longer there. Uh, they've put up their hoarding. Um, it's all, they've done the site prep, and now they're just waiting for council's decision here to, to uh, approve the design. And then uh, further, further to that, uh, work with, with the um, building department to get their building permit, and then they should be off to the races. So. I'll answer any questions council may have, and we look forward to seeing this coming to fruition in, in Creamore. Damn, okay, I was just sent a message that my microphone's not working properly. Is anybody confirmed that my mic, you can hear me okay? Everybody thumbs up? Uh, I find it's more when you turn your head, Doug, if you're, or your worship, if okay. you speak. He says, but as soon as you look down to read or to the side, you you kind of 
fade out. Well, I'm sorry, but um, I can't look here and read reports. I could do this and <laughs> how about that? I'll, I'll, do, I'll do what I can. Again, it's better if we're meeting in person, isn't it? Okay, uh, Terry, uh, good report. Uh, again, you've had a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity to consume some public input, I'm sure, because I know that we had a lot of public meetings that uh, Councillor Patterson was attended on, and I believe Tom, you worked on some of the, uh, the projects in the preliminary stages. So, thank you for for representing us there. Um, is, is anybody got any questions uh, in regards to Terry's report? I see Councillor Leishman. Anybody else looking for anybody else? Councillor Leishman, go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, I, I saw the letter from Station on the Green, Deputy Mayor Burton, but I am wondering how they feel about it. I mean, I know they weren't totally on board when we talked in council about it. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw the Horticultural Society is a little more comfortable with it. I'm not sure how comfortable Station on the Green is, and I'd like to know where the feelings are. Deputy Mayor yep. Burton. Please go ahead, okay. Deputy Mayor. Thanks, Connie. Yeah, we had our, we had our present meeting, um, and uh, really the big issue was the, uh, the relocation of the, um, of the handicap parking. And, and that was one of the major issues was, I think in general there, I mean, we didn't pass a resolution supporting it, but it wasn't not supporting it either. So. The, the issue was about, you know, and they said they would work with the, uh, you know, with the committee and not our committee, but the accessibility committee on, on that. And um, because it, cause that was a concern of, of, uh, of that. But uh, other than that, everything seemed to be relatively okay. Good. Thank you. All right. That's great. And I was glad to have the input of our volunteers from the uh, station on the green. Uh, Councillor McKechnie, was that uh, your request? I'm looking for anybody else. Go ahead. Hey, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so uh, one question to, uh, to Terry. Um, excluding the approval of the spray pad components of the project. So, uh, you know, what's the issue there? Why are we excluding that? And the, uh, also, too, uh, before you get going there, Terry, just a comment regarding the uh, accessible parking. So uh, Councillor Broderick and myself, we are on the uh, Accessibility Committee as well as uh, uh, yourself, Your Worship. And, uh, you know, we, we discussed it. It's been discussed at the Accessibility Committee. I know the station on the green, I monitored their meeting. They discussed it. Uh, we met, uh, Councillor Patterson and I met uh, some of the, uh, uh, the folks from station on the green and the, uh, and the village uh, green people discussed it uh, there uh, you know my opinion is we're not going to satisfy everybody you know everybody's got their own opinion but I think where the village green people are are proposing that it be right now is probably the best position possible and uh, you know we've uh, we had a good discussion about that at the accessibility committee and and I'm quite comfortable with where they're proposing the uh, handicapped parking. Am I allowed to use that term? Disabled parking, accessible parking, whatever. Uh, I'm, a, I'm quite comfortable with the position that they are talking about right now, which is basically uh, if, if they are going to keep it in the parking lot, uh, and maybe uh, Terry can, uh, can uh, speak to this, it appears that it's going to be a couple of places to the couple of spots to the east of the, uh, of the most extreme westerly portion of the, uh, of the parking lot. Uh, anyway, so uh, so I, I'm very comfortable with the way that that's being handled. And so basically, the, my question then is for uh, for Terry uh, regarding why we are excluding the approval of the spray pad components. Uh, uh, what's up with? That? Go ahead, Terry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and to you, Your Worship, to Councillor McKechnie. Um, yeah. The issue with the spray pad is that we only receive the. Uh, the engineering designs for the spray pad on the Friday, June the the twelfth. Um, so it was it was kind of provided kind of last minute, so it didn't really give us a chance to look over those designs. Um, so we're at the mercy of the Creamore Foundation's engineers, and to their defense, they received it a, a little late as well. So um, we just haven't had time to review it. It, was, it came in last minute. 
the Friday before we submit our reports on that following Monday. So it's a more of a matter of timing. Okay. Sounds reasonable. Right, thank thank you, you Councillor. Okay. Is that good? Yeah, no, that's great. And I just want to say, I think it's a great project. I'm, I've uh, monitored a few meetings and I, I, I'm i just amazed. I'm astounded. I, I'm, I think it's a wonderful project and I, I'm happy to see it going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Vashon. Anybody else uh, got any questions? I'm going to have one for Steve Sage in a moment. I'm just wondering if anybody else has any. Yes, Councillor Patterson, please go ahead. If, if I may, I don't have a question. I've been following the uh, process uh, all along, as you mentioned, and I did have a session uh, oh, maybe a couple of weeks ago with, uh, with the people uh, managing the construction and the project. So I'm happy that they're being responsive. I, I think the design that you see now is, is, a, is a really a good interpretation of what the public uh, spoke about. And um, uh, they, there were some changes, which I think makes sense. The stage was moved across uh, uh, the site, so that it's now backing onto food land instead of backing on um, the bank cafe. Just change sides. I think that, and and I like actually the alignment of the. Uh, there was some thought putting into the um, the movement through the park and um, the village green, uh, especially as it moves towards the station on the green. There's also the cenotaph way, which is the southerly most path that goes right to the cenotaph. Uh, hopefully. In time, we can uh, township can do some work there to align some of the work uh, design work that was done in the site to some of the areas just around there, the cenotaph, and uh, and also uh, I think I'm glad to hear that the debate on where the accessible parking should be. I, I was hopefully hopefully that the, I was hoping that the accessible committee could could address those, and because uh, one of the suggestions uh, was to put it also on. Uh, on um, uh, Caroline Street, which would be on the street. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that the accessibility uh, committee has has decided on uh, on that location. So, all in all, I think it's been a, a good partnership. Um, the, the one thing I'll note, just in case there are a couple questions on the uh, on the splash pad, the waterworks is one system. So we've got the fountain and and the waterworks. So there, there's no intention. I don't think there's any intention to indicate that there's two systems there. It's just the one so it's being looked at. So uh, the only question I would ask there is um, when they think it might be coming back um, to, uh, to council. Uh, I suspect they're working on it as fast as they can. So I think kudos to everyone that uh, had anything to do with it, whether you were at a public meeting or uh, at a council meeting or at a station on the green meeting. It's been a lot to talk about. Pretty exciting project for, for Clearview, much less a small community like uh, Cream Moss. So, and uh, I think all of us feel a uh, uh, gratitude uh, to our um, citizens who are, are willing to put uh, some of their, um, their time and effort and money into our community. It's always uh, good to see. So let's move on. Let's make it green instead of brown. Thank you, Councillor. That's a good line. Um, I appreciate that very much. Uh, so uh, anybody else with any other questions? No? Uh, I have a question for Mr. Sage. Uh, and, and first of all, thank you, Mr. Vashon, uh, for continuing to work on this project. And I'm sure that you'll be engaged with it as the process gets a little bit closer uh, to, to being completed. And I'm sure we want to make it uh, sort of work with our recreation plan as well as our park plan and management plan. Uh, Mr. Sage, if you recall, council approved and uh, I signed the uh, uh, the contract or the construction agreement, et cetera, uh, that this uh, that we've approved. Can you just outline for council again some of the steps that they're going to be seeing in construction and the responsibilities and the shared liability of the work that's uh, going to be happening down there? Just to, just to refresh everybody's memory, if you would. Yeah, sure. Worse. I'm sorry. I don't have the contract in front oh, of me. Okay. <laughs> it was quite thick, to be quite honest. It was it was a pretty, but yeah. I mean, the, the point is, is that there is construction going on, and I want to make sure that the public know the hoarding is up, yes, and the type of work that's going on is going to be safe to our best of our abilities. A absolutely. And and so um, I, I won't get into the details today unless you ask, but I can get those. Um, the 
contractor who's looking after the project. Uh, I can tell you that when Terry and I showed up to this, I think it was the second last site meeting, they're a local contractor that is extremely reputable, uh, built some very high-end facilities in our community. And uh, they were, uh, I assume, the chosen contractor by the foundation. So that was very, um, it ma made staff feel quite comfortable because of their capabilities. Um, the construction, I'm suggesting that the construction timetable may be pushed out a little bit. It wouldn't be the first time that COVID and, uh, has created some issues for everyone. So originally we were hoping to have things completed uh, late this year. I'm sure if some of the foundation people are watching, they still hope it will be done this year. Uh, and I hope it will too. Um, but uh, upon completion, there will be a lot of inspections and review of, of the condition of the site. Um, and we'll, we will want to be talking to the station on the green and the food land and the neighbors to make sure it goes good with everyone. But then fundamentally, when the operation begins, it, it's the responsibility of the foundation. But uh, then the property will be turned over to us. So it's a little bit complicated, but I'm assuming you're not going to see that till um, sometime in 2021. Okay. okay. I think that the... Uh... Uh, I would like to echo uh, the comments too, since we're recognizing uh, Tony and Stuart, who have been the leading uh, members of the foundation team. Uh, there's other members there too, but uh, certainly we have heard a lot from Stuart and we appreciate how he quickly answers uh, questions and is very patient. And uh, uh, we're glad that uh, we have a, a very good partnership in place. So uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the interesting stipulations is that uh, there will be an annual meeting of the uh, township uh, with the foundation. And at that annual meeting, they'll review any uh, operational questions. And Terry and Steve will be leading those meetings. Uh, uh, they're held, an annual meeting uh, will be held between the foundation and the township in regards to the operations. And uh, that'll continue on even after uh, the project is uh, finished uh, completion. It has to do with the programming on the site. So, so that's, a, that's a real positive thing too. So. Council, uh, any other further questions? We'll, uh, we'll bring this to a close. Nothing, excellent, thank you, Terry. Council, uh, we have a motion in front of us. Uh, it is moved and seconded, and I'm asking now if you're prepared to call the motion. All those in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you to the work of all the staff who put this together, and thank you to the foundation. All right. Council, going back on our agenda, I now buried that paperwork. Where did I put it? Here we are. Uh, there is a public meeting scheduled for 6.30. Gosh, we're, um, we're actually there. And we're there as a result of the fact that we had that little delay at the beginning of the meeting. So we'll move to public meeting. And uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, are you prepared to take the chair and move? Oh, hang on a second. Madam Clark, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to uh, let members of council know, and in particular the deputy mayor, that I will be bringing in the applicant into the meeting um, once you start the meeting. So just so you're prepared for that. Sure, bring them in right now if you wish, that's fine. Deputy Mayor, are you prepared to take the chair? I am prepared to take okay. the chair. Thank you, then I'll uh, give the chair to the deputy mayor to conduct the public meeting as per our procedure. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, your worship. <clears throat> Uh, we will now initiate the public meeting portion of tonight's agenda. We thank everyone who provided written comments ahead of tonight's public meeting. If you wish to be notified of the decision of the Corporation of the Township at Clearview on an application being discussed this evening, please contact the planning person in charge of the file. This information will be provided in the presentation. As identified in the notice of public meeting, please be advised that your written comments or request to be notified will form part of the public record. Your communication and any personal information therein will be made available to the public unless you expressly request its removal. If a person or public body does not make a written submission to the township with respect to the proposed application before a decision is made or a bylaw is passed, they are not entitled to appeal the decision to the local appeal tribunal. It may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal unless, in the opinion of the board, there are reasonable grounds to do so. 
The following public meeting will involve a brief presentation by our planning staff, including a brief explanation of the written comments received, an opportunity for the applicant or their agent to present their application and respond to the written comments, and an opportunity for questions by council. We will now begin the public meeting with respect to tonight's file. Planning staff will now start with a brief presentation concerning the application. And I believe that is Rosalind who will be doing that presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, let me just get to my screen here. So uh, thank you, uh, Mayor uh, Measures and Council. Tonight we are here for a public meeting on a zoning bylaw amendment, file number 2020-010-ZB, and it's on subject land 11323 County Road 10, formerly Sunnydale Township, now in the Township of Clearview. The Zoning bylaw amendment is to zone a portion of the subject land from Agricultural AG to Agri Agricultural Boarding Kennel AGK. The effect of the application would be to permit the applicant to house up to 35 dogs in a kennel. The subject lands are shown on this map and the, the lands are shown in a hatched gray and blacked out um, area and they are listed as 11323 County Road 10, formerly the Township of Sunnydale, now in the Township of Clearview. Um, the existing policy framework is that the current Township official plan designates the land agricultural and the current zoning bylaw categories uh, zone the lands agricultural AG and hazard land overlay FP. Um, this is a, a map showing the subject property outlined in red, and it is the map showing the existing, existing official plan, which is the, designating the land agriculture. Uh, this is a, an existing zoning bylaw map, which is again showing the property outlined in red, and the property is zoned agricultural AG. Again, another zoning bylaw map showing the property outlined in red. And in this case, it is outlining the hazard land overlay FP area, which is the blue area. And it dictates um, that they, the applicant, if they're gonna build in that area, must get a permit from the Nautilusaga Valley Conservation. This drawing shows a proposed, the proposed kennel um, the blue box is actually depicting the building size or the building envelope and the yellow or the uh, red area is actually showing the parking lot area. So this will be the area where the, um, the people with the dogs will park to drop off their dogs. There will be a driveway to this parking lot and it will come off of the main driveway on the subject property. This is an overhead look at the proposed location of the kennel on the subject lands. This is a zoomed in um, version of the, the property. But again, you can see the blue outline shows where the kennel of the building of the kennel will be. And the red is depicting where the parking and the driveway will be, uh, linking up with the main driveway on the property. Um, Another, it does show in this picture uh, the subject house um, and the barn as well as um, some accessory structures. This shows a drawing of the inside of the proposed kennel. Um, you can see there is a center, center aisle in the main of the building and that the kennels for the canines are actually on either side of those aisles. Um, this proposal is actually not going to have any of the animals outside of the building. They will have a run within the kennel space. Other things that are included in the building are an office, a lounge, a cat room, a wash and a bath area, a kitchen, and a supply room. 
notice in circulation. Notice of the subject zoning bylaw amendment has been given in accordance with the Planning Act on June 2nd, 2020 through mailing out of notices as well as posting of a sign on the property. And details of the application and supporting material have been provided and made available to the public online and have been mailed and circulated to the commenting agencies. This is a circulation map showing um, the orange uh, colors show the properties that were mailed the notifications or notice of public meeting and they are actually within the 120 meter buffer area of the subject lands which is outlined in red. Uh, this is the slide which I would uh, read out public comments that I have received and to date I have not received any public comments but I have received um, a comment from the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority and their comment was that they have no objections to the application. Um, Planning staff will continue to receive applications and if people are interested in submitting any application or comments, sorry, we will continue to receive comments. And if you are interested in providing any of those comments, please email me at rworkman at clearview.ca or you can also call me at 705-428-6230 and my extension is 248. Um, just a, an overview of where we are in the review of the application. Uh, tonight we're at the public meeting stage and um, we will be, can staff will consider comments received and then we will be proceeding to uh, write a, a recommendation and, a, and proceed to present the report to council on the application. Council will either approve or deny the application and then there will be a notice that is mailed out. Um, there will be 20 days to appeal that uh, decision. And if there is no appeal of that decision, then the bylaw will come into force and effect. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to receive any uh, questions of council. Um, or, and I also know that the applicant is, um, has joined um, and is probably willing to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rosalind. Uh, I understand the, app the applicant is here online with us. Do you wish to provide any additional information regarding this application? I'm sorry, Pam, I'm not aware of, I, I cannot see the applicant. Are you, are you able to see if he's able to uh, provide additional information? So the, the applicant is online and uh, I see that she has unmuted herself, so I will let her address you. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. Hi, hello everyone. Um, so the current land use is we run a boarding facility for horses and we're just looking to, um, as Rosalind was, was stating, we are just looking to expand into um, a dog boarding facility, which will be, everything will be completely housed inside. And is, is, that all, is that the only comment you wish to make uh, at this time? I assume you'll, you'll remain available for, should uh, council have any questions, please? Uh, does a member of council wish to make a comment or ask a question or, of either staff or the applicant or their agent? Uh, Councillor Leishman. Yes, thank you. Through you to the applicant. Um, I don't understand why there aren't any outdoor runs. Isn't that a long day for a dog to be in a kennel like that? Or, um, or are you planning to take them for walks? Um, inside the kennel, there'll be an indoor um, suite area, and then there'll be a, a indoor um, dog run for each individual dogs. Um, we, we would provide dog walking individually. Um, I don't, um, want to have dogs outside um, playing together because I feel that there's um, liabilities with that. 
Um, but mostly everything will be done inside and there won't be any outdoor play area. If the dogs were to be walked, it would be individually by a staff um, on a leash. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does that answer your question, Councillor Leishman? I have a, a, a supplement if I don't mind, if you don't mind. Yes, please um, go ahead. Sorry, I'm surprised you put it at the front of your buildings and not behind. Uh, but now that I see that you're inside, um, and not that I'm concerned about the noise, I just thought it would be uh, a little less confusing for the animals with all the horses and everything, or are you far enough away from the paddocks that it's not a big deal? Um, the reason why we chose to go in front is just that some of the, um, the there's more paddock area here behind, sorry, um, behind the house. That's where all the paddock area actually is. Um, yes. There is one paddock area that runs in front of the house. On the other side, it's riding rings. And we just felt for safety reasons, it was better if all the horses were behind because that's where all the paddock area and where the traffic of the horses would be. Um, right. And in front, it would, be, it would be giving a bit of a separation for safety. Thank you. Uh, one more question, sorry. Thank you. Um, Will there be someone in the office all day long? Will be someone monitoring the dogs all day or is it sort of an on and off? No, there'll be a ratio um, of staffing to dogs. Okay. And so there'll be someone in the office all the time. All right, thank you. Councillor McKechnie, I believe you had a question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, just a, a quick look on Google Earth. Uh, I see the house to the north of uh, the applicant or where the dog kennel is going to be. It's about 300 meters away. So uh, have uh, for uh, Rosalind there has, uh, am I right? Did I hear you right that no one has, uh, has complained or there have been any concerns from the neighbors? And for the applicant, uh, have you talked to the neighbors? Have, have, any, have any neighbors expressed concerns? So that's my only question. Thank you. So oh, first, first I'll go to uh, Roslyn to answer those questions and then we'll give the applicant a chance to respond. Thank you, um, Councillor McKechnie. Um, we, I have not received, I was in on Sunday night to check uh, to see if there were any uh, comments received and Christine uh, Taggart was actually in the office today and I didn't receive anything uh, presently. Um, and I think I did a bit of a calculation. It looks like they're well over 300 meters um, from, from wherever this is going. So, um, but I know when I met with Louise and her husband, um, I did suggest that they go and, act and communicate with their neighbors. Um, so I'll maybe just uh, let Louise uh, carry on from there. Yeah, so, so if the applicant could respond, please, at this time. Yes, thank you. I did. Um, I did go out and reach out to each of the individual neighbors. Um, the one neighbors to the north of our property, um, they were renters um, and I, I wasn't able to get a hold of the actual owners, um, but I did actually speak to all of the other um, neighbors on um, east and west. And yeah, so I have okay. approached each and, and no one um, um, raised any concerns or questions at that time. Is there anybody else on council that has any questions? Yes, Councillor Lamers. Thank you. To the applicant, uh, I'm surprised that you're not having any outside walks. And to Connie's, those runs are, what are they, eight feet? That's a long day sitting in, sitting in those little eight foot square boxes. Um, and are you going to be uh, monitoring 24 hours a day, somebody in the office? Um, right now in our, our um, boarding facility, we have cameras that are hooked up to our phones. We, um, as we've gone um, through further discussion with my husband, we're, and sorry, I should, have, I should have brought this up earlier, we're doing an indoor play area. We're actually reducing the amount of dogs. I just find like in weather like this, um, it's not it's not a lot of fun for a dog to be out in this heat either. So if we have an indoor area, it's it's monitored by staff at all times, um, and we would be able to provide um, playtime in the building. 
Councillor uh, uh, Councillor Walker. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just a quick question: the size of each of the units. You're, you're saying there's 35. The size of each unit is approximately what size? Um, the sleeping area is um, five by six, and then the run is um, seven feet long. Okay. Could you update the, the run is how long? Seven feet. Seven feet. Okay. So, feet. So, so for a small dog, seven feet long is great, but for a large dog like a German Shepherd or larger, uh, seven feet's not a lot of run for an indoor run. Why, yes, and that's why we've decided to do an indoor um, play area so that we can make sure that they're getting adequate exercise and being monitored all the time. Could you give us an idea? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry if, if I may. Could you give, give us an idea on the size of the indoor play area, approximate? The indoor play area is going to be 30 by 30. Oh, okay. So according to your drawing, then where will it be going? Um, we're going to take out some of the kennel rooms and we're going to have less of those and we're going to have, sorry if we can look at the drawing. You, I can so see. when you're first walking in, there's the office, then there's, there's the kennels, there's the aisleway, and when you go before you hit the back kitchen area, it'll be right here. Okay. Down here by the supply room? Right. Yes, it'll actually be all the way across. Oh, right along. For most of all the space, yeah. Oh, yeah, right along that? the whole wall. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. So, uh, Councillor Walker, are you, uh, any more questions? No, that's fine. Thank you very much. Okay, does anybody else have, anybody else on council have a question? I can't see all of you. You, maybe you could help me here. I'm on, there we go. Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, Your Worship. Yeah, just a, a quick one. And that is regards to uh, uh, signage on the road. I guess it would be some type of sign to uh, indicate the, the business uh, is uh, through our staff or Luis, is that, a, is, that, is that what you're intending to do? I guess you'd want to direct people to where you are to find you. Bit of a long lane way to find it if you didn't know where it was so right yes okay is that yes uh, Roslyn. i was going to say, I was going to say counselor work but, but. <laughs> Roslyn, please go in ahead in another life maybe in another life yes um so just so for councils um uh, knowledge we have also we will also be processing a site plan application and that will be the opportunity for us to help Louise and her husband look at a good location for a sign of course it will be on the county road so they'll need to go to the county for a permit but we will ensure that there is one that is in the right time thank you for that any other questions from council members Going once, going twice. This concludes the public meeting with respect to tonight's file on, on this evening's agenda. We thank all who provided written comments and for their interest in the matter. All input received with regard to this proposal will be fully considered by staff in their recommendation and by canceling their decision with respect to this application. A report regarding this proposal will be prepared for council who will make a decision concerning this matter at a future meeting that will not be decided tonight. Uh, I will now pass the chair back to his worship. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to the planning staff as well as the proponent there for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. All right, we're gonna move on with our agenda then council. And uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, for again conducting our public meeting process. Uh, council, item number seven. It's the approval of the minutes of the council meeting for June the 8th. I'll hold it up here so you can hear me. Uh, a recommendation be it resolved that Council of the Township Therapy hereby approve the minutes of the June 8th, 2020 council meeting as presented. A mover and seconder, please. Mr. Walker and the uh, Mr. Broderick. Mr. Walker and Mr. Broderick. Any questions on the minutes? 
Seeing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And motion carries. And uh, at this time, looking for any business arising from the minutes, if any, councillors? Councillors, nothing, okay. We're gonna move on to item number nine. Um, there's uh, there's two items that are listed on the agenda. There is gonna be a third one, which it'll be communications from the mayor. Uh, I've asked uh, Mayor Burton to join us at uh, for uh, a quick moment to update council on uh, some work that's uh, gone on on a file that we've already been discussing here. So. First of all, item 9.1, our closed session report. Our closed session report. Uh, well, there will be no report tonight as it was a, uh, a matter of property, so we're not discussing that in uh, at this time. Uh, and then item number two is the Barriston Law Test of a Clearview Bylaw limitations in regards to the uh, Confederate flag. So council, um, council's aware of this. I have uh, uh, in front of me uh, uh, quite an extensive letter from Barriston Law um, I want to review for your uh, understanding and your uh, consideration that I was approached by a resident of our township, JC, who was uh, very concerned about the Confederate flag and the potential for it to be uh, displayed within our community. And uh, she asked if we could, in fact, pass a bylaw. I appreciated her uh, sending in the request. I uh, uh, told her that I would uh, contact both our clerk and our bylaw, senior bylaw officer, which I did. Uh, and in communication with our clerk, uh, Ms. Fettis, uh, she confirmed to me that uh, the, she would be asking uh, Barrison Law for a comment. And so I was, I was very pleased that our staff took that initiative to, to get some comment on this because this is a very difficult and very uh, serious issue as far as the display of this Confederate flag in our community. So um, I appreciated that uh, our clerk did this, contacted Barrison Law, of which we are already contracted with them to provide municipal uh, advice. Uh, and uh, Sarah Hahn, who is a lawyer with that firm, you may recall her counselor, counselors, I believe she's uh, attended in front of us uh, in the past. Um, prepared quite a quite a good letter. Um, I distributed this letter to all members of council after I received it, and then uh, the clerk placed it on the agenda. And the uh, it, it's got a very good review, in my opinion, of uh, the areas of the Criminal Code of Canada that reflect hate speech. It's got a good review of some neighboring municipalities and how they have interpreted uh, the, uh, the use of, of uh, hate speech or symbols uh, in their community. Uh, but the, the unfortunate answer is, of course, that municipalities do not have authority to do that. So uh, to pass a legislation on a Confederate flag. Um, the answer is right here on the front page. I'm going to read just the, the section that gives the answer. Uh, the township does not have jurisdiction to prohibit the flying of the Confederate flag as this freedom of expression is protected by the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, a bylaw passed with the intention of limiting freedom of expression would be squashed by the court for being outside the jurisdiction and found to be invalid for being a conflict with the Charter. That's the, the crux of this whole message. The challenge here is, of course, is that as municipal leaders and I'm elected a municipal council, um, I believe it's our responsibility to listen to the public and hear their concerns. I believe in this case we did just that. Uh, and I believe that we have uh, uh, asked our professional staff to come up with uh, an answer for us. And this is the answer that's been provided. I'm prepared to very much accept this um, as uh, Barris and Law have given us good advice in the past. And I think that this is pretty well uh, laid out. Um, it is unfortunate for sure. Uh, as much as Individually, we would, uh, or you know, as a group, we can state that the display of the Confederate flag may be considered deplorable, may be considered unacceptable, and uh, I am not. I, I personally can't can't display that flag in my property in my home. Uh, I won't do it, and I think that it's uh, it's inappropriate that we see it anywhere in our township. To be quite honest. The difficulty there, of course, is that as municipal leaders, we don't have the authority to 
prohibit fed clearview is a caring community and i believe that we are uh demonstrating that over and over again with uh, some of the things that we do and say in this township and so i'm uh i'm very proud of how our community does care very much um, certainly we have debated things like flying the uh the uh, the pride flag in our community we've had that debate and the majority of council continues to support that when asked to do it interestingly enough we did not receive a request this year i don't know why i presume it's because all of the events uh, that uh, that organization host had been canceled like everything else in our country um, but that doesn't diminish the fact that uh, this council has uh, year over year continued to support that anyway uh, members of council do you have any comments on this item mr mckechnie anybody else mr mckechnie go ahead uh thank you your worship uh, so I have to admit, I probably uh, wasn't uh, too much up to speed on the Confederate flag. Uh, uh, so I did a little bit of research and uh, yeah, I found that it was never a national flag. Uh, it was never adopted by the Confederate con Congress. It never flew over any state capitals during the Confederacy and was never officially used by any Confederate veterans groups. Uh, however, it has been, uh, the Confederate symbols have been the mainstay of white supremacist organizations uh, from the Ku Klux Klan right through to the skinheads. So I think as a township, I think that maybe uh, I would like to put forward a resolution and the resolution being that the township of Clearview make a public statement in support of in inclusive inclusivity and against racism, racism and to send a clear message to the residents and the tourists alike to know that they are welcome and safe in our communities and further that this resolution be sent to the local MP, Terry Dalvo. So I would like to put forward that resolution. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Council. Uh, Councillor, I appreciate the resolution coming forward. Um, uh, perhaps uh, we can ask for a seconder. We'll have a discussion on it. I'm seeing seconder, Councillor Leishman and Count Broderick, but I'll go with Leishman. She's the first one I saw. So Madam Clerk, uh, are you comfortable with uh, receiving that information as you've heard it? Or would you like that written? You've got that okay? Yes. Okay, yes, she's you, got it. Sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. So we have uh, a motion on the floor. Councillor McKechnie, please keep it handy. You may have to reread it just to help us along here. Uh, Deputy Mayor has a request to speak. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yes, exactly. Uh, I just wanted if you could read it again there, Doug, please, for us, that your resolution, just so I clearly understand what it says. Councillor McKechnie, go ahead. All right, uh, be it resolved that the Township of Clearview make a public statement in support of inclusivity and against racism to send a clear message to the residents and tourists alike to know that they are welcome and safe in our communities and further that this resolution be sent to the local MP, uh, Terry Dowdle. Okay, thank you. Anybody else with any questions or comments in regards to the letter that we received from, from Barrison's or this motion on the table? All right, I'm seeing none. So council, I'm prepared to, uh, to vote on that. Thank you, Councilor McKechnie for, uh, for crafting that, uh, that motion. I think we'll, we'll be happy to receive that. Members of council, are you prepared to vote? All those in favor? That passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Councilor McKechnie. Uh, further, of course, is a uh, motion to receive the reports from the uh, from the mayor. But uh, before we get to that, uh, if you would, I would like to ask for Mayor Burton to join us, if you could. Uh, is uh, Mayor Burton still there? Hello there, Mayor. Nice to see you again. Hello. Um, Mayor, just before council uh, this afternoon, uh, you communicated uh, with members of council uh, in the uh, position. Uh, of the municipality and since there's been a great deal of discussion in our community uh, underneath communications from the mayor I'm asking you to update uh, this council on the communications that uh, you sent to us thank you your worship I'm happy to do that um, so I'm happy to report that we did receive information from Matt Plain today of 104 Edward Street uh, and also from his lawyer uh, Susan Smith and it was documentation that um, we are 
pleased to announce that he does have documentation of a previous zoning amendment from the former Cremor uh, zoning bylaw. And that zoning amendment actually did address the private servicing of the property for industrial uses. So uh, that, and given that there was clear intent by Matt once he purchased the property, our lawyer is satisfied that that uh, would be a legal non-conforming uh, case uh, in regard to servicing. So that zoning issue is addressed. Um, and uh, looking back also, he was able to produce the, um, the building permit. And looking back at that, our building department is satisfied that the building was constructed for the motor vehicle service station uh, purpose. So uh, we don't have any need to pursue that matter any further at this time, or any further regarding the motor vehicle service station uh, with respect to the building department or zoning. And we have uh, advised Matt and his lawyer of that, and I'm certain that they're probably quite pleased. And we are certainly pleased that we have now received the information that we needed in order that we could properly assess the circumstances. All right. So basically, if I can just sum it up uh, before I get to you, Barry, um, is that we have received information that has satisfied the, the site uh, that it is correctly zoned and the, the municipality is satisfied that they're doing um, the right activities on that site. Is that, is that the angle or that the direction that you see us going here, Mara? In regard to the motor vehicle service station, yes, that's correct. Okay. All right, and do you believe that there would still be um, concern from the building department as far as building code concerns with the with the structure? No, there is no concern from the building department. All right, well, that's great news. Thank you very much for that, and I appreciate, uh, uh, Council, you are fully aware of the number of citizens that have written to us and uh, brought this forward, and uh, I think that it's uh, it speaks well for our community who has uh, come forward and spoken and, and shared their opinions. But I also think it speaks well for property owners uh, to make sure that they have their uh, I's dotted, T's crossed, and so on to make sure their property is in fact uh, within the proper zone and within the proper usage. So uh, it speaks well for the work that uh, Matt and his partner have done to to finally bring this to uh, to a conclusion. Thank you very much, Mara. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, you had a question, and anybody else? Mr. Deputy Mayor, go ahead. Uh, to comments, actually, uh, if you, if I may, Your Worship. First of all, I'd like to thank Mira for all her efforts and everything she did. I had uh, a, a conversation with her this morning prior to this uh, information coming about. I, I we received an awful lot of comments from from the public, and I'd like to clarify something because the, the impression of the public was that we that we were trying to rezone this and basically boot Matt off his property. And that was so false. Staff came up with a report that that talked about rezoning for for residential purposes and, and a temporary and a temporary zoning bylaw. And council turned that recommendation down. So council did not support that. So council was not in support of of trying to remove Matt from the property. Council was in favor of finding a solution that worked. And that's exactly what has happened now. And many thanks to all of council for, for us having the wisdom not to support that, that recommendation at the time, to take time to uh, find a, a better solution. And many thanks to, you know, to uh, Mary Burton and her team who diligently worked hard with Matt, uh, telling them, get this information, get this information, and we will have a solution for you, which is, what has happened. So I just I just wanted to clarify some of that misunderstanding that the public had. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. I couldn't have said it better myself. I appreciate that. Uh, Councillor Patterson, uh, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think it was uh, an interesting exercise. I think in uh, it, it was a grassroots public meeting <laughs> came up from, from uh, our community. And, and I, as I've noted before, I think it's something that we, we should be proud of that, uh, that uh, I think in a broader sense, um, what we uh, like to know about the values of our community came to the forefront. Uh, they, they, they wanted to support a local business. Uh, they wanted uh, a, a community that had services for them. Uh, it's one of those uh, age appropriate uh, services that I like to think about in this case, uh, 
certainly from the se seniors' point of view, it's a delight for them to be able to uh, drive their car to the gas to the auto and then walk home to their <laughs> their uh, residence and then uh, and basically come back and get it. So I thought from that point of view, I also like to note that uh, while it was a uh, probably a um, bit of a uh, uh, a uh, uh, tangle for uh, Matt, the uh, the operator, to go through. I think I thought, uh, although there was a lot of things that he had to, to put forward, um, very articulate, very I thought very uh, professional in the sense that he he, he knew what he wanted and he, he cooperated. Uh, I, I also think though that uh, there's a lot of um, goodwill that it's been built up uh, by uh, Mara's team, and I want to mention Scott because I had a couple uh, discussions with our chief building officer, Scott McLeod, and he handled himself very well. And I, I think I even know from Matt that I think he appreciated both uh, the, the, the openness and the, uh, the, uh, uh, and the guidance, sometimes insistence, uh, but uh, from our, our staff. And uh, so good to have a good outcome here. Um, and so it's, uh, it uh, predates amalgamation, <laughs> this stuff, but, uh, and, uh, but so I'm, I'm really pleased myself to see that. that I, I, one thing, I, I, and I think you've answered the question, uh, Mara, one question I had is that, that, uh, that Matt will be sure to, to want to know for sure, is that the, his application, the permit that uh, put, put him in the uh, legal nonconforming uh, still meets current code or yeah, that 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 survey of the building or whatever you do is being accomplished. Well, Go actually, ahead, Mara. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Sorry, through to you, uh, through to Councillor Patterson. Um, actually, it doesn't quite work that way. We it, it's a matter of what was in place at the time that the building was constructed. Um, I can't speak to whether or not it would meet today's code or not. Yeah, but but it it is not. A, it, there's no further hurdles for him to. Uh, to keep his business in operation. In regard to the zoning and the building permit, that is correct, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Thank you, uh, Mayor Burton, for chipping in there. And uh, Tom, you mentioned uh, something there that was really good. I mean, it was a bit of a, an upswell of, of opinion that was coming forward in a sort of a non-conventional way. It is 2020 and we're meeting in a non-conventional way right now. So <laughs> this, this whole process of how municipal governments moves ahead is, evolving so I think that it worked out really well I'd also want to mention too uh, if I may uh, the professionalism of our staff have always been uh, something that shone through on all of this and Mara I know it's uh, perhaps difficult for staff members to write a report and then have council reject it but it's also refreshing to know that council still supports everything that's going on around our community and and we want to hear from your professional input to make it work for the suitability of our community. So thank you for all your effort, and, uh, and particularly to Scott. Scott uh, was, uh, was uh, he's very knowledgeable, and yet we don't see him here at this table that often, so mm -hmm. we appreciate him very much. So, Councillor McKechnie, I believe you had your card up. Was there someone else who wanted to speak? I'm just not sure. Yes, Councillor McKechnie, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and yes, uh, I'd also like to uh, thank Deputy Mayor Burton for his clarification. I think there was a lot of misunderstanding out there. Uh, thanks to Mara for all her hard work. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the residents for all their letters. I didn't appreciate the tone of some of the letters, but hey, I'm a counselor, I got broad shoulders, I can handle it. Uh, the question that I have for, uh, for Mara is that uh, there was an issue with the 70 meter setback uh, that, um, well, and I don't have it in front of me. What, do you see that as an issue uh, down the road? Uh, 70 meter setback, I think for, small industry or something will that be an issue well that is the ministry of the environment standard for the sort of least noxious least offensive uh, oh and i'm sorry through <laughs> through the mayor to councillor mckechnie uh that is the least um uh like the sort of the lowest uh recommended setback for an industrial use uh of the class one which is the least noxious industrial use um, however, given that this is an existing situation, we would not be applying that. Uh, if we were looking at doing a new business park or new things, or you know, making zoning decisions, 
these are the kinds of guidelines that we would look to uh, in order to um, assess whether or not the use is compatible. Um, you know, whether the, this, this, the, through the official plan process and through other processes, we'll still look at land uses and compatibility in the future, um, but this particular issue is, uh, ha has been put to rest. All right, thank you very much. Anybody else on this topic? All right, thank you again, Mary Burton, for, uh, for joining us here and uh, keep up the great work. <laughs> All right, Council, we have a resolution here and uh, uh, look for a mover and seconder. Uh, be it resolved that Council of the Clear be hereby receive the communications from the Mayor for information. I have a mover, please. Uh, Mr. Walker and the Deputy Mayor. And uh, you've heard the motion. All those in favor. And that motion carries unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Councilor McCackney, for bringing forward that motion regarding the, uh, the flag. That was, that was good. I appreciate that. Okay, Council, on to item number 10. This is a big one. County. County Council highlights from June the 9th. Uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor, Deputy Warden, would you like to comment on some of those County Council highlights as well as our big meeting tomorrow? Thank you. I certainly would. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I will start off by saying um, we have some very exciting news at County that uh, Simcoe Manor Village in Beaton, which is one of the four long-term care facilities that uh, the county owns, has been approved for a redevelopment. Will result in going from 126 long-term bids into 160 long-term bids. I was talking to the um, to the deputy mayor uh, of New Tech, uh, uh, and uh, they're quite excited. It's quite the buzz down there that this development is going to happen. This um, this center has been there for quite some time. It has been there since, I'm trying to find the exact date, but I believe it was since 18, since 1898. This, uh, this care center has been there. Originally was, was used for uh, uh, people who were, who were not well and stuff like that. And it has turned into this, you know, one of these major developments. This is going to be very similar to the, to the one in, um, Penetang that was built by the county as well, and it's it's known as one of the the crown princesses in uh, in, in uh, long term development, well recognized by the provinces. Are there uh, if ever other municipalities want to know how to build long term care? Go speak to Simcoe County because they're experts at. It. And uh, so that's excellent news that will be happening. It will be covering a campus of four hundred and thirty eight. 1,558 square feet also include a range of, of amenities such as health, medical services, pharmacy, dental, restaurant, dining cafe, retail salon, ex exercise area, outdoor recreation. If anybody uh, uh, on our staff, uh, on our staff or our council is interested in, in seeing uh, one of our long-term care facilities, I would, after the COVID issue is over, I'd be happy to, to take you up to, uh, Go see one of these. I am a big proponent of county. County is quite aware. I've very much been the um, spokesperson at county on behalf of the long-term care staff and all that. So, the unfortunate news that I have to report today about Simcoe Manor is we have an outbreak. We have one uh, one resident who has been confirmed COVID positive. So out of, the, out of the all four that we have, that's the only case that is actually, and that was confirmed earlier today to me. Um, some of the other issues is the gypsy moth infestation status that is happening. And uh, at this time, our forestry department has been very concerned about it. But at this time, the uh, Ministry of Forestry has said it's not severe enough that, to take action that we need to sit and monitor it. Um, one of the problems that has been happening, particularly since COVID has hit, is our, our Ontario Works at, at County. So Ontario Works are our, our, our staff who work with, you know, uh, social assistance, those various things, social assistance applications, dealing with clients applying for social assistance, social housing, all those different variety of things. And uh, our, our staff have, have, been, have been put at risk 
put it that way. And, and actually there's been altercations where police have been called. So uh, County Council passed a motion to, uh, to hire Garter World to protect and have on-site security at all our uh, Ontario Works offices. Um, yeah, there's some of the other things, the Sustainable Operations Program Summer for 2020 and the update on partners for climate protection program climate action planning those can be read on the thing i am pleased to talk to you about the governance meeting because usually it comes after our meeting but today we had our governance meeting so i can talk to you about it prior to so the move is still on to reduce council from 32 members down to 21. that would be 16 mayors from the town and five at-large county councillors that would be elected at large by the public. The issue we're facing is representation. Representation by population versus representation by, uh, by uh, um, eligible voters. So, right, so there's been a ward system set up that's a five ward system that would account for the five at large uh, uh, counselors. Uh, we would be part of Collingwood with Sega Beach and, and Clearview would be one ward. And I believe we would be, we could be able to run ward, ward four, whatever number we'd be ward four. And then uh, New Tecumseh and Bradford would be in uh, ward one and it's split up uh, you know, uh, in various other matters and some to the north and, and that. The problem becomes um, the south uh, wants to have, because they pay the larger amount of taxes or con contribute towards the, uh, the county budget, they feel they should have a higher uh, vote when it comes to voting on county council. So typical county council is every one person gets a vote but there's a lot of weighted voting going on that's based on population so obviously bradford has a much higher population so their weighted vote would be i don't have it all the information in front of me but say their weighted vote would be worth 12 12 votes where our weighted vote is worth six i believe it is so you can see where population happens so the big discussion today is should it be by population or should it be by um, eligible voters in the uh, in, in, in the municipality as to how much weight your weighted vote carries? So it's been referred back to staff, and our next governance meeting is, I believe, July seventh, July the seventh or eighth, um, and and they're coming back to show us how those changes would be versus. Um, representation by population versus representation by eligible voters. Most municipalities go by representation by eligible voters. The problem it creates in Simcoe County is we have a lot of northern uh, municipalities that have seasonal that that have seasonal residences. So what happens is all of those people who are seasonal have the right to vote in, in an election. So if you add up, uh, if you add up, say, with Sega Beach and Tiny Township and 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 um, Ramera or something like that, or or Severin Township, their seasonal, their seasonal uh, uh, eligible voters outweigh the total number of voters in uh, in Bradford. So you can see where some of the problem is coming. And I'm just using Bradford as an example. I'm not trying to click on Bradford by any means if anybody from Bradford is listening. We're trying to find a, a you know, a, a solution that works for everybody. But it's been a difficult challenge. And uh, I think I've said enough for today about County Council. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor, Deputy Warden. It's, um, it's difficult work, isn't it? And I appreciate uh, the, the work of a governance committee. Um, it gives you a little bit of a taste of some of the work that our clerk's department does when they have to prepare an election and, and make recommendations to us as counselors as to how an election will be exercised. So uh, it's, it's, it's the right thing. So hopefully uh, we will get an answer soon so that um, each municipality across Simcoe County will have an opportunity to vote uh, to support or object 
to the plan. And then that will then trigger uh, each municipality uh, having the, the ability to create their own election process again. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's not over yet. It's, it's a difficult one. So uh, the challenge here, of course, is that we've been directed to do it uh, through that initial review that to happen in January, about our uh, January last, about our, our uh, individual municipalities and uh, the review that uh, happened across all of SIP or all of Ontario. And then the minister's office has signaled that they would like us to continue to re look at some of the options in Simcoe. So thank you for your work, uh, Deputy Mayor. I know it's, <laughs> it's long work, so keep up the good work for us. Anybody uh, with questions of uh, the Deputy Mayor, Deputy Ward? No, we've heard lots about that. Looking forward to county council meeting tomorrow. Council, I have a, thank you, Barry. I have a recommendation uh, for us to consider. Be it resolved, the council of the township of Thierry, hereby one, receive the county council highlights for June the 9th, 2024. Uh, Deputy Mayor, second goodbye. Uh, Mr. Walker, and I'll call the motion. All those in favor. And thank you very much. That passes unanimously. Well done. Council. We are at item 11, which is now our ward report. So I will go by my screen right here. Don't anybody move. See somebody just moved. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Councillor Walker. You're up first. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, not really a whole lot of uh, committee reports. Uh, since the committees are still not uh, moving forward or youth committee or whatever, uh, I'm glad that the, the provincial government went to a stage two, I was at least able to set up a hair appointment and get the little hair on the top of my head dealt with and uh, the beard trimmed up at least uh, making me somewhat more uh, maybe uh, attractive than normal mind you would take an awful lot to make this face attractive. The other thing question I have is um, if somebody on the library committee would be so kind in their report to give us just a little update on what's happening at the library if they can, thank you. Uh, Councillor Walker, you're looking dashing as always, no doubt about it. <laughs> and I also got a haircut too, I don't know if anybody noticed. <laughs> anyway, good for you, Bob, you're looking great. Uh, okay, Councillor Broderick, uh, you're next on my list. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, June the 9th, uh, attended the Clearview Accessibility Advisory Committee meeting, a uh, very good discussion on the uh, Village Green project. Um, our next meeting is uh, July 14th and June the 16th attended the library board meeting. Uh, the new Lowell Library uh, has begun curbside pickup as has the Cremor Library. Uh, Stainer will actually begin curbside pickup Um, and on Wednesday, June 24th, uh, Clearview, Clearview Chamber of Commerce will be holding their HM, also uh, and it's at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, and they're going to be looking for a number of, of uh, executive on the chamber, including the and it for me, worship. Okay, uh, uh, Councillor Broderick, you were kind of broken up there a little bit for my end. I hope everybody else copied you, but we did hear most of what you said there, and uh, uh, I appreciate uh, your comments there. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lamers, you're next on my list. How are you doing, John? Thank you, Worship. Yeah, not much happening on this end. Um, I'm just going to put a motion forward, uh, notice a motion put forward for next week's, or next meeting's agenda for the 12-13 side route. Other than that, everything's all well around here. Okay, very good. That's great. Nice to see you, and uh, I hope you had a happy Father's Day. Um, Councillor Patterson, you're next. Uh, thank you. Yeah, just uh, uh, several um, meetings, uh, a couple actually in person from a distance and, uh, and uh, a number of them uh, basically a video or, or phone call. 
um, a couple of them at the end of driveway. Um, the, uh, the bulk of my time this week, uh, last couple of weeks has been, uh, uh, has been split between uh, traffic uh, concerns and issues, good productive meetings with both staff and, and uh, residents. So we're working on a couple of things, uh, traffic calming, uh, I got three sort of hot spots. One is Fairview uh, uh, Fairgrounds Road, uh, which is probably more detail coming up. Um, the residents on concession uh, three, going out the back end of the south end of Creemoor and uh, side road six, seven, uh, and uh, George Street, a couple of residents there, all concerned about uh, what we can do this summer um, and, f and for the foreseeable future. So uh, I'm working with Dan on, on most of those things and the more to uh, come to council on that. Um, and, and the other part, which has now come to a conclusion is with uh, a lot of the concerns um, and support uh, for Matt Plain. So we've heard about that. Um, I did a walk around to the restaurants on Mill Street uh, because this was the startup. And um, my assessment, uh, first of all, Dan did an excellent job of of uh, marshalling uh, where the tables can go on the sidewalks in Mill Street and the BIA has done some extra work. Uh, but I also noted that the uh, businesses are uh, getting right into it. They are keeping living by the, um, the COVID uh, guidance uh, for restaurants, uh, doing a good job there. Spending some extra money, but doing a good job. Uh, glad to see Terry's uh, Vashon's program and Amanda's to, uh, to uh, promote more traffic in, into our towns. So I'm glad to see that, that'll help. But generally the feeling I get from them is they're hanging in, they're paying the bills uh, and they're coming back. So, uh, so, so far I haven't seen any failures and that's not just the restaurants. Also, I've heard a general um, comment that they're, they're anxious to get them back to some form of retail normalcy, not, not, not what it was. Uh, but again, most of them are saying they think they're gonna make it. Um, and um, I've had, uh, I want to put a word out to our, the, uh, although they won't hear this probably, but uh, for those of you that may be wanting to talk uh, and have it to the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit, um, they've been giving me some very good advice and uh, very accessible, e uh, easy to get a hold of. They'll call me back if they're, they're busy. They're open to uh, reviewing any notes that I might uh, want to take down and uh, comment on them. So. Uh, very, uh, very nice to have that support from the, from the uh, county in general, but from the health unit uh, in particular. Um, and most of that work was with regards to some questions from uh, the Queen Moore Farmers Market because they're starting up this Saturday uh, uh, in the Queen Moore Springs uh, parking lot. And. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to comment on, uh, just a general comment and based on what we've already heard today, um, is that it really, I hope everyone is impressed with the need for a really solid uh, public consultation process when we do get around to discussing the, uh, the end results, the study of the, the comprehensive traffic study. You, you can see that the, uh, I think it's more than just COVID, uh, COVID, but I think the fact that COVID has sent everybody home um, and, and they're walking on some of our rural streets. But I, I think we really need to make sure that we build into that council review uh, a good solid uh, a public uh, consultation process. That's my report. Thank you very much, Tom. That's a, a very valid point about public consultation and the comprehensive traffic study is uh, ongoing and certainly this council looks forward to receiving it. And uh, hopefully we have some action items in there that we can respond to. Thank you very much for that. And uh, a good point also about the, uh, the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit. Their website is, is very good. Uh, has got some great links and some very clear uh, language in there. If you're looking for any information about uh, anything specific from you know, patios to washrooms to uh, sneezing in your arm, all the details are in there and it's, it's quite good. So there to be congratulated. Okay, moving on. Councillor Leishman, you are next. Councillor Leishman, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to see you. <clears throat> nice to be seen. Um, okay, so I do have a request from council. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a request from council. I sent you out a letter today because I don't know how to do an on-desk report. So uh, the letter was from the Ontario Horticultural Society 
and it was addressed to our uh, Clearview Garden Clubs and Horticultural Societies. And they need uh, a letter of permission from council to be able to work in our gardens. They're also been asked to get in touch with the health unit and get an okay from them as well, which they are going to do. But I would like to make a request that um, council direct staff to send a letter of permission to the Clearview Horticultural Societies and Garden Club to work in Clearview Gardens effective immediately. Okay. Um, all right. So there's a motion made by Councillor Leishman. I think it's pretty straightforward and uh, something that we can support our staff in in uh, supporting our volunteers with. Um, Mr. If I can ask for Mr. Uh, Vachon, Terry Vachon, to join us in regards to uh, recreation volunteers, if Terry could uh, step in. And at that point, I'll also ask, is there a seconder for Councillor Leishman's motion? Councillor Broderick, I recognize you. Um, Mr. Vachon, are you uh, on board here? Pam, do you see, uh, is Terry still on board? I'm just gonna quickly look here, do you see? Uh, yes, Your Worship, Terry's still on board, but it looks like he might have stepped aside from his computer. Okay. But, um, certainly How about you I can answer, could you answer me a question then? Uh, is that okay to just ask for uh, a letter of support to our volunteers to be able to use our, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty clear question that Castor has asked for. Absolutely, Your Worship, with the uh, council's blessing tonight, we can uh, get a letter to uh, the president of the Clearview Horticultural Society and uh, so they can proceed forward with their good work in the community. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Does anybody get any questions? None? All right. Good motion there. Oh, go ahead there, Tom. I was just reaching for my cards. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, just, just to, to follow up, is, uh, so uh, uh, certainly support the, the effort uh, by Councillor Leishman. Um, I did have the opportunity to speak to an inspector of the health unit about the, um, uh, the garden. That's why I made the comment uh, earlier this afternoon to you. And it applies both to the farmer's market and to the garden. And, 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 um, and just to expand on a little bit, I have, uh, it, does, it does include um, situations like um, uh, flower gardens and that sort of thing. Okay. It sounded to me like there were, there was some appreciation that not everything would apply, but, but that they would ask that. So I would ask in the motion uh, that we make reference to make the letter saying that this is being done uh, with the understanding uh, that uh, they will have a, a plan vetted by the health unit. And, and like I said before, the health unit's very helpful uh, to, to put those things together for them. I tell you what, I think that uh, the direction from the staff would be that they must meet the health unit um, requirements. Yeah. That would, that's what I was hoping I was gonna get from Terry uh, if he was here. So- yeah. uh, No doubt, that, and you can, that's true, that is true. So uh, they, 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 they were very, um, the inspector is actually some. If they, you can maybe Connie, you can pass on to them. That if they get a hold of an inspector, uh, they will. They can ask them very specific questions, and you get really good, straightforward answers right away. Not a problem. Connie Leishman would like to speak, and I do acknowledge Terry Vashon has joined us. Go ahead, Connie. I did uh, actually send a copy of the letter to Terry as well when I sent it to council. Although I haven't talked to him personally, um, I think it was pretty straightforward. And the Garden Club, um, the Horticultural Society of Brentwood, for sure, assured me that they are getting in touch with the health unit and they are talking to them as well. Uh, I don't expect that the Garden Club or the uh, Cremor Horticultural Society would be any different. They're all pretty uh, nervous. They've got volunteers they have to protect and look after, and uh, some are seniors. So I'm, I'm confident that our Garden Clubs are on top of all of that. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Vashon, have you been monitoring our discussion about garden clubs there? Are you comfortable if uh, Council gave you direction to write a letter offering support to the volunteers? Yes, I feel quite comfortable. And I apologize, Your Worship, I had to step out for a minute. I had a bit of an emergency there. Oh, okay. Well, we won't keep you. As long as you understand, we're going to need this right away, okay? Yep, not a problem. All thank right, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other members of Council? No? Okay, so we have a motion. I appreciate uh, the input from staff, from Council and the direction is uh, to do this uh, as per the uh, 
the memo. Okay, uh, motion has been moved and seconded, so now I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that passes unanimous. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Leishman, anything further? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, carry on. <laughs> um, I found out that a lot of, some of our patios are having trouble getting permission to do, or sorry, some of our restaurants are having, getting trouble, having trouble getting permission for their patios. Now, I'm not sure, um, Stainer, because their sidewalk is a bit narrow, uh, they can't get more than one or two tables out. I'm thinking that they're probably thinking of going to the back, and I'm not sure that that's, that's possible. I don't know whether I we just, can reach I it. just hold you up there. Mr. Uh, yeah. Perot, Dan Perot, could you join us? And go ahead, carry on with County. Well, I'm not sure that we can help them with their permits from the health unit, but if there's anything that the township can do to help facilitate it, I would like to see that. Um, because I, I know our, our restaurants are kind of hanging on there by a thread at the moment. Um, anyway, the, I'll, if Terry wants to comment, I'll, I'll shut up. Sorry. Actually, we're going to go to Dan. Dan is, the, okay. is responsible for the road occupancy permits, which is what okay. this question is all about, about roads. And uh, he is, the, as we explained to the members of the BIA, is the single point of contact on this whole issue. So Dan has handled the patio thing on behalf of the township. Uh, Dan? Uh, your comment on helping people with Highway 26. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, so uh, when all of the, the information came out from the province on, on opening and, and patio openings, uh, first point of con or first contact was uh, was from the BIA in, in Creemore. Um, so we worked with them on, on preparing a a plan, I guess, or, or some requirements from the, the municipality. And then at senior management, we discussed um, the, the request that may, may come out of uh, restaurants on the uh, Highway 26 corridor. So, you know, unfortunately, um, Highway 26 is an MTO regulated road, even though it is through a connecting link. And I have put a call in to a contact at MTO to see what their requirements may or may not be. Um, so I, I haven't heard back from anybody from the MTO yet. That's, that's basically where we're at um, with, with allowing, you know, patio extensions out onto Highway 26. Um, you know, I'm a little bit more concerned with, with allowing that there's definitely an increased, a very large uh, volume of traffic that comes through Stainer on Highway 26. And so allowing, uh, you know, people, pedestrians to walk around um, a patio that would be placed on a sidewalk is definitely more, uh, definitely more risky. Um, so, you know, something would, would definitely have to be structurally put in place I would think to, to allow for that so I uh, th that's basically where it sits uh, you know I am a waiting just from the MTO um, for that part of it uh, people in Cremore uh, restaurants in Cremore sorry um, have had you know the only restaurant that I have I had the discussion with um, they seem to be very receptive to, to my comments and, and requests uh, met met with them a few times uh, on site, so we're we're working with them, trying to get their situation a little bit more uh, uh, <laughs> tem temporarily permanent, I guess. We don't want to make anything permanent, but uh, just to make it a bit more um, uh, viable for them and, and safer for for pedestrians and their their patrons. Thank you for your work, Mr. Perot, and it's it's is critical that we remember. And it, it's it's a it's a share the road situation, isn't it? Because they're going to be sharing the road with motorists and people sitting at patio tables. So it's it's a, we want to make sure that safety uh, is is paramount. So thank you for that. Mayor Burton's on on board here as well. Did you have something else, Mary? You want to jump in with? Yes, if I could, Your Worship, to uh, uh, Councillor Leishman's point about in Stainer, some of those businesses may want to put their patio on the back. Um, we are developing a private patio 
uh, simple private patio policy. Uh, we're going to be discussing that at senior management team on Thursday, and that uh, may be uh, based on how Wasaga Beach is doing it. So just to put that out there, if anyone's listening, we haven't received any applications that I know of at this point for something like that, but um, you know, we certainly want to uh, help our, uh, our restaurant businesses. So if they're looking at a private patio, they're more than welcome to get in touch with me. Thank you very much for that, uh, Ms. Burton. And uh, uh, also for Dan uh, and for council, on Friday I received uh, uh, a panic message and uh, from a property owner in Stainer. And so I forwarded a message on to our MPP, Jim Wilson, asking him if he could uh, at least uh, contact some staff at MTO and reach out to Mr. Perot as our representative for uh, these road occupancy permits. So uh, Mr. Wilson responded to me late this afternoon, just prior to this meeting, actually in an email. So I appreciated that he is hearing us. So hopefully that'll help us as well too. Dan, anything further than on the patio situation? Um, no, nothing, Your Worship. Um, you know, it, it's an ever-evolving uh, thing. Um, if anybody does have a request, uh, like Mara said, you know, the, the, the only request I've received, I think, is the one that, that, uh, that you're talking about there, uh, Your Worship. Uh, from anybody in Stainer. So uh, the, the people, the, the restaurants in Cremor seem to be um, maybe uh, not doing it or, or not wanting to do it uh, other than the, the one restaurant uh, that has already that I'm working with. And the other restaurants or, or cafes in Cremor seem to have something already in place um, that they they have had in the past. Great stuff. All right. Well, I think this whole summer is going to be patio season, wouldn't you say, Councillor Leishman? I look forward to so. perhaps seeing you and Michael at a patio sometime. You never know. I'm not really out yet. I'm not really know. going going places too well, not too many places anyway, a few drugstore mostly. But yeah. Um, but I will reach out to the restaurants that I heard from and ask them if they want to do something. Um, and they need some direction or help that they shouldn't get in touch with this, with Clearview. Uh, it would be the right thing to do anyway. Thank you, Mara. Thank you, uh, Dan. I appreciate it. Um, I think that's it for now. Happy Canada Day, everyone. Next oh, Wednesday. thank you, Councillor. That's great. Uh, we have Councillor McKechnie, Councillor Janine, and, and Deputy Mayor Burton. Mr. McKechnie, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so I attended, along with Councillor Broadwick, uh, the accessibility uh, meeting, and uh, the <clears throat> Village Green people uh, gave us their presentation, and they were receptive to our comments regarding accessibility, and uh, uh, pleased to say that that meeting, I, I believe, went very well. Also attended the Creamore BIA meeting, and um, a little bit confusing. Uh, there was uh, some uh, conflicting information uh, coming back and forth uh, there, but I think we sort of got it we figured out, and... Uh, want to thank and mainly uh, some of it was to do uh, to do with the patios and uh, and such and I want to thank Dan and, and uh, Mary for working with the uh, restaurant owners uh, to get the patios open I, I know that Dan is a contact uh, uh, person and I've been uh, directing the uh, restaurant owners to deal with uh, with Dan on that so uh, uh, and I, I was uh, down the main street of Creamore today and saw the patios open uh, you know it looks good uh, Dunedin Hall, uh, oh, well, no, I won't bother talking about that. Uh, that's, and uh, numerous speeding issues um, I've been uh, dealing with. No easy answers, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to the traffic uh, management study. And to be blunt, I think some people, they just don't want any cars going by their house at all. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's just my opinion. But uh, there, we do have a few issues I, I believe though in the township uh the lavender cemetery is having their what do you call it family day celebration day whatever on uh, june the 28th this sunday and uh it will run from 10 till 4 i think in the past it was more of a you know like two to three type thing everybody got there and chatted and such however because of social distancing 
Uh, there won't be anything organized this year, so it's 10 to 4, so they're just inviting families uh, to come out and uh, I guess by spreading it out a longer time frame and because it's outside, they're not, they won't have a, as big a crowd at any one time, a period of time. And uh, there won't be, uh, like I say, any organized speeches or anything like that. So, uh, uh, but I will be attending that. So that's about it from Ward 2. Thank you very much, Councillor. I appreciate that. And speeding is a concern. Uh, Councillor Janine, have you got anything to report from Ward 1? Well, like you said, <laughs> speeding is a concern. But oh. uh, we've, we've been dealing with it. And it was really good that we had the... Um, staff sergeant there that he gave us the directive to do that for the people that have issues with speeding. Um, I just wanted to, um, one more time, because my internet was so lousy last time, uh, give a shout out again to Amanda and Terry. The, um, I was in at the DNL the other day and standing on my circle and making a comment to the fellow that was behind me about how it was like a candy store for adults because they have the alcohol just sitting there as you're going out. And he, he made mention then too about the floor circles looking so professional. And he said, I said, well, those are from the township. He says, you know, I just noticed that the township had notation on those. He said, they're really cool. He thought that was really, really professional job. Um, I just wanted to uh, send a shout out to, um, our hall board volunteers and the mayor as well. Uh, we went and we diligently tried to put some grass seed down and make it look pretty around there. And particularly Patrice McCammon, um, you'll know her, um, she was Councillor Christie's friend. She volunteered to do our flower bed out in our planter in front of the hall. And she and her mother during all of this went and spent some time and did that. And she said it was really, really nice time for her and her mom to get together. And um, what else? Well, unfortunately, there won't be any men's softball this year. They've decided they, they were talking about doing a modified um, rotation, but that's not going to happen. They just couldn't figure out how to do that safely. So. There won't be any formal ball, ball uh, baseball for us to watch. I just wanted to, and this is Councillor McKechnie's area. I'm sorry if I'm stepping on toes here, but uh, I didn't get a chance to bring it up last meeting. We just got these in the mail. It's this, it's Park Center and Park News. And it was put out by the Singhampton community, and they did a little free draw, I believe, but that was way back in June. But it just tells all about um, the Singhampton Park, and it goes into a little bit about the hall. It gives an outline, too, about their finances and stuff. But it was just really informative about everything that's up and coming up in Singhampton. And I just wanted to give a note to, uh, just a shout out to them as well, that I thought that was really, really kind of cool. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> That's good for me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Janine. And uh, thank you for mentioning the uh, Nottawa Hall uh, Flower Garden. I'm, I was really pleased to see that Patrice uh, wanted to join us and help chip in then. So it was really nice yes. to have her there too. Yes, thank it you. was. Thank you. Very, very good. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burton, uh, not that you're last, but uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add uh, in the ward report section? Under the ward report, I would just mention that uh, Station on the Green did have a, a meeting there last week, uh, uh, mainly dealing with two issues. One was the approval of the uh, Village Green uh, uh, plan that they had, and uh, I see that we passed that tonight. And the other issue we're dealing with is our, our long-term uh, custodians, uh, Irene and Steve Davenport, have submitted uh, their resignation. They are retiring from that position. So we are actively trying to find uh, somebody else to take over those responsibilities. And that's, uh, that's about it, uh, in addition to uh, all my county stuff. Thanks. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council, for all those reports. I just have uh, two things I want to mention. Uh, one, 
Um, there has been some questions about the opening or potential opening or future opening of our Clearview Administration Center. And I want to be clear, we are still following the direction of the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit and uh, the ability of our uh, facility just physically to open the doors and allow uh, exchanges in our building uh, is, is still not uh, in a situation where we are comfortable uh, having the doors open. Uh, the emergency operations team, which uh, still meets every week, uh, we're meeting again tomorrow. Um, we do talk about this quite regularly. There are uh, steps underway right now to prepare the uh, administration center counter, which we all know our countertop there. Uh, it'll have many plastic uh, barriers. Uh, but additionally to that, uh, in the building, in the cubicles, they'll be creating uh, barriers between all the cubicles and, you know, for the protection of the staff that are working here in our building. So uh, that is still moving ahead. Um, Mr. Sage is, has already left us at this point, but I wanted to say on behalf of him that uh, they have been uh, diligently trying to get this work done. And securing contractors has been a, a little bit of a challenge. We've been circling around at different contractors and uh, getting this work done. So uh, we do not have an opening date. However, I want to be clear to the community, we are continuing to provide the services that are available uh, to the citizens at Clearview Township, uh, both by uh, voicemail, phone call, email, uh, drop off uh, information in an envelope in the, uh, in the drop box, and in fact, uh, during business hours, oftentimes you'll see a, uh, a recycled recycle bin uh, at the front door that is being used for the planning department to have planning application uh, envelopes that are often big and rolls of, uh, of uh, plans and so on be dropped off at the front door. So business does continue and uh, we will try to get the doors open on the municipality offices as soon as we can. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is uh, the BIA and the Chamber. Um, you know, this COVID thing has been particularly stressful on businesses. We're all aware of that. This, um, you know, I, I think I mentioned this before that uh, Minister McLeod called this uh, a triple threat because the COVID situation is a medical threat. It's also an economic threat in the economic downturn, and it's also a social threat. And that's because we're not seeing each other. We're not engaging with each other in the way we used to. And so this has been very, really difficult on, on businesses for sure. I want to recognize the BIA and Chamber of Commerce volunteers who are business owners right here in our community who step forward and volunteer to help and to help bring awareness to the programs and, and help other businesses with their work. And they don't get enough credit in the fact that they're business owners themselves who are already stressed in their business. And yet they still come out and they still volunteer and help other businesses. Those are pretty special volunteers, folks. I just wanted you to know that. So that's what I wanted to report tonight. Uh, that's all I have. And I'll uh, end this section of our council meeting if we want our agenda. Oh, and one more thing. Happy Canada Day. Thank you for mentioning that, Councilor Leach. That's coming up. All right, uh, item 12 is departmental reports. We have uh, a few things to get through here today. Public Works is up first. Uh, this has been an ongoing concern. I'm glad to see that we're uh, gonna be talking about this tonight. Uh, PW017-2020, it's the Cremore Wastewater Treatment Plant Blue Sky Assessment Proposal. It's uh, recommended, uh, be it resolved, that Council of the Township peer review hereby one, direct staff to retain the services of Blue Sky Energy and Consulting Inc. for $30,075 to complete a process review and capacity assessment of the Creamore Wastewater Treatment Plant as described in Schedule 2 of this report. Can I have a mover and seconder to get this moving? Councillor Lamers and Councillor Patterson. Mr. Ron, nice to have you joining us. Uh, I know you've been waiting there a while, but thank you for, uh, for sitting in. Oh, and uh, yeah. maybe you could outline uh, some of the content of this report, which uh, we've been waiting for. Uh, certainly, Your Worship. Uh, so it's been about a year since um, the treatment plan issues were brought to our attention um, and the seriousness of them. Uh, since then, Jeff Langwa, he Jeff Langwa is a PN. Um, he's also got a, 
an MBA. He's a vice president for the public sector of RJ Burnside and a water and wastewater expert for the company for at least 20 years. He's with us today to answer any question. He's uh, founded the company Blue Sky and uh, he has- Perhaps all Jeff wants to join us here since we can have him join us. If he wants to join yeah. in, he, he's welcome to. And go ahead, Mike. Sure. So the report basically is just asking to uh, endorse Jeff's recommendation. Um, there are a number of agencies involved with the operations being calling with council. Obviously, they're the owners of this system. Maybe in effect with there's no development right now until we get the problem solved. And we also have a very large employer in Clearview Township may be affected by whatever happens here. Everyone has to be in discussions with each other. Um, and this report is to keep council informed on where we're at with with what's going on there. So if Jeff Jeff's uh, online, um, I am Mike. Yeah, he if is. There. Any Hello, questions Jeff. for the report? Jeff can answer them. All right, thank you, uh, Jeff. Welcome. Nice to uh, have you join us, and uh, thank you for your report. Uh, members of council, do you have any questions of uh, Mr. Ron or Mr. Langlois? There you are. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> Glad to see you there. Uh, Council, any questions? I see Councillor Patterson looking for anybody else. All right, Councillor Patterson, go ahead. Uh, yeah, for Mike and, and Jeff. Uh, the uh, so, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the um, generally, I've always looked at this uh, the capacity of this uh, facility about a meter, a cubic meter per household uh, was the capacity. But but generally, I think Cremar has always been uh, less than that. Uh, and you can see from the numbers. Um, what, um, are there any moves uh, in the short term? I don't know how long it would take to get a significant fix uh, to, uh, to take some conservation measures. Some kind of a public uh, program where we can say, Let's, let's try to uh, voluntary, uh, voluntarily uh, decrease the amount of uh, intake. If I may. Go right ahead, please. Um, through the chair, Councillor Patterson, uh, most sewer systems are at least one cubic meter per household. We've done extensive work to decrease the amount of water in that system due to the membrane technology and the limited capacity. Um, I think we're talking about um, the components, I'll let Jeff speak to the components and what the next step are to fix the, the treatment part of it. But as far as conservation, um, you know, compared to Stainer, we're well under a per unit capacity. And if you compare it to a place where maybe they're not as robust with their infiltration detection, you know, I, I don't know what like the town of Collingwood would be, but Creamore is probably one of the lowest in Ontario, um, to be quite frank. Jeff, did you want to jump in with uh, any comment on the uh, on that capacity? Uh, unfortunately, guys, I'm not able to comment on the relative uh, flow per household. I just don't have any data in front of me to say either way. I'll just I know Mike has been working on it, and I'll just go with his word on on that at this time. Um, certainly, I can get access to those types of data. I just I haven't prepared for that for this evening. Um, the other question, I believe, pertained to sort of interim solutions, uh, things that would help uh, in the short term at Creamore. Uh, certainly, in our original report, we alluded to a few things, uh, and it's part of the mandate uh, of this recommended study to investigate them further, um, because we are aware of that there is some pressure in the community for servicing now. Um, at the same time as the plant is having challenges in handling what it already has. So um, we will look at those more through this study and hope to be able to recommend something as an interim solution. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tom, Councillor Patterson, do you have a follow-up there or? Yeah, I did. So yeah, Okay. Uh, and thank you for Mike just uh, uh, commenting on it. The, I, I was quite aware of uh, Cremar's always been a lower consumption and then Stainer and others. Um, I just wondered if uh, there was any, so a lot of the, uh, the situation now is also due with some of our industrial intake uh, and we're working through. I was just wondering if there was any, any, and, uh, any opportunities to do even better. I'll leave that one go for now. Um, the, 
the other comment is, is um, does this mean that development in Cremor is at a stop or uh, for, for any new approvals or any, any new builds, including any approved plans? Hmm. Good question. Mr. Ron? Um, through your worship to Councillor Patterson, final approved subdivisions are, are being permitted to finish. Nothing new is being allowed to proceed other than that. So to answer the question, phase uh, one of the Alliance subdivision, we would allow them to continue until that phase is complete, but nothing else, including renovations to, you know, the main street of Cremor, for example, um, unless, you know, Mr. Langwa and, and Blue Sky are going to be looking at interim solutions with the expectation there's a five year, very expensive, uh, investment required for a permanent solution, but we're going to look at an interim solution to see if we can allow some things on the way to that. Sounds good. Mr. Patterson, you finished? Because I see the deputy mayor looking for anybody else. Yeah. Just okay, Councilor uh, Patterson. So, so we do have a couple, they may, it may be in a final plan, um, but uh, we, we do have another one, um, the granite. Is, is it in draft now or is it, Will it be allowed to proceed if they decide to proceed? Mr. Ron? Um, so until we find an interim solution, nothing other than what's final approved. Um, you know. Yeah, I can show so that. The short answer is no, they can't proceed yet. That's good. All right, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burton, anybody else? Deputy Mayor Burton, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my question is to Mr. Ron. Correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, but my understanding is this uh, facility was built with this in membrane technology and was supposed to design to handle the expansion of Cremor. But the, the technology is failing, if for lack of a better word, or is not able to handle the volume that it was originally designed to handle. Is that correct? Mr. Ron? Um, through your worship to Deputy Mayor Burton. I think the expectation of what the plan could do was overestimated more than the plan is failing. Um, that was the first plan of its kind in Ontario. Um, we've been growing with it and as you know, the brewery is also growing rapidly and I think the expectation was it could do a lot more than it actually can. Uh, if you recall when I brought in membranes of a, of a different make to try to solve our problem, thinking that the pore size may be different and the type of material may, may help. Well, it doesn't. So there's much more going on than just the amount of water going through those particular membranes. And that's why the Jeff Langwa and the Blue Sky proposal um, specifically will, will look into what those issues are. Great, thank you, Your Worship, that's good. All right. Anybody else? All right, seeing none. Uh, just a quick, uh, oh, sorry, I, I apologize. You're right. Mr. McKechnie, you're on my list. I had it written down here, but I didn't see you getting excited. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, your worship. Uh, just a quick question, and my apologies. I don't have the report in front of me. My iPad uh, ran out of battery power, so I'm just sort of going by from memory here. But the cost of this, uh, what, what pot of money is this coming from? Is this uh, coming from the Clearview, or I mean, the Creamore? Uh, you know, their water rates or, or wait, wait, how is this being paid? Mr. Ron, excellent question. Um, uh, through your worship, uh, Councillor McKechnie, the, yes, the water and sewer rates, water and sewer pay for water and sewer, so there's no effect on the tax rate. So um, last year when we did the water and sewer rate report, all of these things were included in that study. So when we set the rates out for five to six years, all of these costs are included in the rates as they are now and this is part of a $75,000 2020 line item um, a budget line item for cream or sewers okay thank you thank you all right council seeing no further questions thank you gentlemen and thank you for for your work uh, to prepare this report and I look forward to seeing how this resolves anything further Mr. Ron nothing just thank Jeff for his time for being here. Um, I th thought there might have been some tougher questions, so I wanted to make sure the right guy was in the room. <laughs> hey, Jeff. 
you do a great <laughs> job of handling it. So they don't get to me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for joining us. I hope that uh, we've uh, enlightened and entertained you tonight, too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, members of council, you've got a motion, uh, a mover and seconder have already been made. I'm looking for you now to call the motion. All those in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ron, Mr. Langwan. Nice to see you. Council, uh, moving on. Community services, uh, committee of adjustment, uh, recommendation be it resolved that council attached with their view, thereby receive CS 024 2020, uh, the COA for June 2020. Report for information. Mover and seconder, deputy mayor, seconded by uh, Mr. Walker. Any questions of the committee of adjustment reports? Seeing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, CS025, which is the uh, sign bylaw. Here it is, uh, CS025-2020, the proposed sign bylaw, uh, which is 20-43. Recommendation uh, be resolved that Council of the Township Therapy hereby one, receive report CS025-2020 from the Director of Community Services regarding the new sign bylaw. And item two, pass bylaw number 20-43, being a new signed bylaw for the township. I have a mover and seconder on this motion. Roderick and Leishman. Thank you, Roderick and Leishman. Um, Ms. Burton, another great report. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to have you popping in and out of the meeting here today. Uh, why don't you outline uh, some of the highlights of this report and uh, then we'll go to questions after that. Go Thank ahead. You. Um, so I believe we've addressed all the concerns that were brought forward by um, uh, Rob, uh, Bob Charlton and then uh, hopefully I did my best at addressing all the concerns that council raised at uh, the night of the public meeting. Um, certainly uh, there's if there's anything that council wishes to have changed we can certainly do that for you uh, either in an amendment tonight or in a future amendment. Because uh, some of the things that I uh, that were brought forward by council did make it into the bylaw. Uh, in particular, Connie Leishman, Councillor Leishman's uh, question in regard to the uh, projecting signs. There she is. <laughs> the projecting signs, uh, making sure that the side and rear entrances had that. So I have added that. Um, and then there were some other items that. I wasn't clear whether council wanted me to make those changes or not in regard to direction from council. So uh, they are there in the comments should you wish to make any of those changes. But uh, anyway, the bylaw is here for you tonight and certainly hoping that council is comfortable in passing the bylaw this evening. All right. Um, thank you very much for that. And thank you for including obviously comments from the public as well as comments from council. All right, members of council, do you have questions of Ms. Burton and her report? Mr. McKechnie, I see you. Anybody else? Go ahead, Mr. McKechnie. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, thank you, Mary. Mary uh, it's a great report. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really happy that we're cleaning up the township and uh, you know some of the uh, the signs and and such. I think that uh, you know I'm 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 happy that we're uh, that we're able to get those uh, cleaned up. So I have uh, two um, two items that uh, for amendments, but I think I'll leave the second item till a later date because I think uh, we would be discussing that. Uh, I think it, it deserves uh, its own period of discussion. So I'm just going to put forward the first amendment that I have written down, and that is I'd like to see that uh, 200 meter, sorry, that 100 meter setback from the billboard to a residence changed to 200 meters. So instead of 100 meters from my billboard to a residence, uh, be a minimum of 200 meters. So I would like to put forward that amendment. Okay, um, I'm just writing that down so I have it here. Uh, uh, that's a good amendment and uh, so I'll put it forward here. Is there a seconder? Is that uh, Patterson? Patterson's going for the seconder. All right, uh, let's have a discussion on that. Uh, First of all, Mayor Burton, any comments from you about any technical regard about a 200 meter setback for billboards? 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I don't have any concern with that. Um, because the Municipal Act doesn't require a public meeting and because there's no appeal period, if Council wanted to make that amendment and add that to the motion tonight, they could do that. Uh, and then we would certainly adjust that in the bylaw uh, for signing by the Mayor and Clerk. All right, thank you very much for that little technical update. Oh, Deputy Mayor first, then Councillor Patterson, looking for anybody else on this amendment. Deputy Mayor, go ahead. Yes, I want to support Councillor McKechnie in his motion, and uh, I agree, 200, it's an easy, it's an easy uh, fix, so you got my support. Thank you very much. Councillor Patterson, anybody else? Okay, Councillor Patterson, go ahead. Yeah, the reason why I support it is, um, in the past, one of the problems with the billboards uh, has been the glare from the, uh, the lights. Um, it, especially farm communities uh, along the airport road have experienced several of those complaints. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Director Burton, but uh, Mara, did, did we cover all the lighting provisions in the, the bylaw? I went through it last Thursday or Friday and I didn't see. Through your worship to- yeah, go ahead. I can call it up here. But, uh, yes, we did. That's in a separate section under illumination. And and it was okay. Because that that is that has been a problem in the past. I have yes. some other comments, but I'll wait until others have commented. That would you can find that under section five point nine, counselor. All right, I'll take a look while somebody else is uh, talking. All right, thank you very much. Anybody else, any questions or comments while that's being reviewed? Uh, my only comment there on that topic though, if I may, is that I've always been a big believer in the whole dark sky design uh, yeah. theory. Some of that was exercised at the uh, Steer Enterprises. Some of it, uh, when that was uh, building was constructed. Uh, there's also some of that evident at the um, uh, the waste recycling facility on County Road 63, just near the Stainer dump. Uh, some of that uh, lighting in there was uh, was adjusted when that building was uh, put together. I think that those are uh, good steps to uh, to use as uh, the dark sky lighting techniques. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Burton. Thank you, Your Worship. That's an excellent point. It is in our site plan agreement as a standard requirement. However, I see that it's not under the illumination part here. So I can certainly add that as well as an amendment to this, should you wish, uh, to, to ensure that any lighting is dark skies compliant. I would be happy to see that. Uh, <laughs> um, we'll carry on. Mr. Lamers, yes, go ahead. No, I was just agreeing that we need to have that added. Mr. Lamers would like to make the uh, motion to uh, add the dark sky. Mr. Lamers, that seemed good. Thank you. Mr. Lamers is making the motion. I'll second her on that. Uh, be Councillor Deneen. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue to talk about the First Amendment. We'll get that written down. Oh, thank you, Councillor McKechnie. Councillor Patterson, you had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that was my point, because uh, that was the uh, the issue with, uh, with the billboard. So, uh, good, you've got, oh. got one of my points, so thank you. Okay, so we've got two amendments, which are both uh, both good, and that's good. Anybody else on these, uh, these points? Uh, just to clarify with Madam, uh, go ahead, Tom. Okay, this is a different point, but it's with regards to the, uh, the, the 2,000 meter separation for billboards. Okay. Two kilometers. Uh, it ties in with uh, the fact that uh, our bylaw will be retroactive, but we're going to selectively or using our own discretion where to apply uh, the correction or the conformity to our new bylaw. Uh, just a question. Um, we have, we may have signs, um, we may have billboards that are in place now that, um, that aren't in compliance. And that may restrict the, the relocation of uh, signs that could be in compliance, but uh, wouldn't be in the right location because of the, they're within that two, two kilometer or 2,000 meter. Um, so how, how do we handle that? If, if, there's a, if there's a sign that we would approve to meet this bylaw, if there wasn't a non-compliance, are we then going to go to the existing owner to correct or de deny the application for the new one? Hmm. Ms. Burton? Thank you, Worship, through to Councillor Patterson. 
Uh, so if somebody has received a building permit for a billboard sign, it's not our intention to have those signs removed. Uh, certainly the bylaw is retro retroactive, but that we have other things that are more of a concern than that. And billboards are a substantial investment uh, and uh, provide um, income for our property owners. So that would not be the first thing that we would be going uh, under bylaw enforcement for. And, and frankly, I just don't anticipate that we will do that. Um, if there are illegal billboard signs that are out there that did not receive a building permit, uh, then we could pursue those, particularly if they were, were a number of clustered ones or if they were in ill repair or if there was a development opportunity or a redevelopment opportunity on the site. Um, we would take those opportunities to work with landowner uh, to bring the billboard into compliance. <clears throat> And in, and in some cases, they may be able to get a permit, and in some cases, they may not be able to get a permit. Uh, so we will certainly be looking at those on a case-by-case -case basis as we move forward. Um, but it wouldn't be really our desire to try to bring all of the billboards into compliance to this separation distance. Uh, so it's more of a go-forward basis in regard to those legal billboards. Very good. Thank you very much for that. Um, I don't see anything further. Nobody else? Okay, so uh, just for the benefit of Madam Clerk, I'm gonna ask for two different votes. The first one will be on the amendment that's presented by McKechnie, seconded by Patterson, in regards to the 100 meter setback being adjusted to the 200 meter setback for billboard, billboards, setback from residences, is that correct, McKechnie, I believe? And so that'll be the first one. Uh, we'll call that motion. And then the second one will be the dark sky protocol, adding that to the illumination section of the report. That's Lamers and Deneen. And uh, both of these motions need to then address the actual bylaw. So the bylaw will have to be uh, amended to reflect these two amendments. All right, council, hope that's clear as mud. Let's go with the first amendment. Voting on the first amendment, all those in favor? And that motion carries. Council, the second amendment regarding dark sky protocol for illumination, Lamers and Deneen, all those in favor? And that motion carries. And then on the original motion to uh, receive uh, CS025 uh, from the director as also passed bylaw number 20-43, being a new sign bylaw for the township. Uh, anything further? Nothing further. All those in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Wow, thanks, Mara. Great to have you here. Uh, we got another thing to talk about, though, and that's the signing of the lease agreement. I don't know if that has to do with you. I guess it does. CS026, signing of a lease agreement for 5825 uh, 2728 Side Road. Recommendation Be it resolved that Council of the Tastro Care be hereby one, receive CS026 2022 information. Item two, agree that the terms of the lease agreement with Signum Wireless Corporation to construct the telecommunications tower at 5825 2728 Side Road, Stainer. And item three, approve bylaw number 20-42, authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute the lease agreement with Signum Wireless Corporation. Okay, a mover and seconder, please. Walker and Deputy Mayor. Mr. Walker and the Deputy Mayor. Anything uh, you'd like to report, Ms. Workman or Ms. Bergen about the Sigmum Tower project? Um, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I think it's pretty clear and I tried to keep my report concise. Um, of course, they haven't been able to build this tower because we haven't entered into this agreement. So um, I suspect that hopefully when or if council decides to go forward with this, that maybe we will have a tower in, in the coming months. Um, I think we've recognized and we've had comments that um, in the neighborhood of Stainer, there is some internet issues. And I think as a rural community, we have been challenged with um, that at this time during COVID. Um, so other than that, I, I'm open for questions. Perfect. Any questions? Thank you very much. Any questions from the floor? All right. Seeing none, uh, I'll give you one comment, and that is um, 
it's refreshing to see these telecommunication tower providers uh, reviewing how their towers will be offered to multiple carriers. You know, too often the towers get built by a single carrier and they remain uh, isolated and it causes the people to build in other places and proliferation of more towers. I think this is very positive that this is for uh, multiple uh, users or potentially multiple clients. So that's, that's, what, that's the way these things are supposed to be done. Thank you very much for that. Uh, members of council, we've got a mover and second. You've heard the motion. I'm prepared to call. All those in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much, staff, for that report. We have dealt with uh, Parks, uh, Culture, and Recreation Village Green. So we're moving over to Provincial Gas Tax Agreement. And that is with our finance department. Recommendation, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby one, receive the Provincial Gas Tax Agreement, Gas Tax Agreement Report for information. Uh, and item two, approve bylaw number 20-44 to enter into a letter of agreement with Her Majesty the Queen in right of the province of Ontario as represented by the Minister of Transportation and authorize the mayor and treasurer to sign the letter of agreement on behalf of the Township of Clearview. And I have a mover and seconder on the motion. Mr. Broderick, seconded by Mr. Walker. And uh, our uh, Treasurer Kelly has joined us. Nice to see you. Uh, would you have anything you'd like to add to the report? These are just the standard letters of agreement that we, uh, we get. We've already done the one for the federal tax. This is for the provincial gas tax. Uh, so the report just outlines what the stipulations are. Our maximum amount for the uh, 2020 calendar years hundred twenty six thousand nine hundred and seven dollars um, and that's pretty much it we we sign these annually thank you very much for all your work on this and uh, I'm sure you will put it to good use <laughs> for the township um, members of council any questions to uh, our treasurer Kelly McDonald seeing none you've heard the motion and you have the report uh, prepared to call the motion all those in favor and that passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Kelly. Council, we've got our bylaws. Uh, bylaw number 20-42 being the lease agreement with Sigma Wireless Corporation. Recommendation be it resolved that bylaw number 20-42 being a bylaw to enter into a lease agreement be presented at read a first, second, and third time and finally passed on this 22nd day of June 2020. You can have a mover and seconder on the bylaw. Uh, that would be Deputy Mayor Burton and Councillor Leishman. And you've heard the bylaw as presented. I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Item number 20-43 is a uh, signed bylaw. Uh, recommendation is, be it resolved, that bylaw number 20-43 being a signed bylaw be presented and read a first, second, and third time and finally passed as amended this 22nd day of June, 2020. And I'm a mover and seconder. That'd be Councillor Lamers, seconded by Councillor uh, McKechnie. And uh, you've heard the bylaw, and we've had the discussion of uh, the amendments. Nothing further. All those in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. And item 2044, the Provincial Gas Tax Letter of Agreement recommendation, be it resolved that bylaw number 20-44 being a bylaw to enter into a Provincial Gas Tax Letter of Agreement, you presented a read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed this 22nd day of June 2020. Mover and speaker, please. Councillor Deneen and Councillor Leishman. And you've heard the bylaw and heard the presentation. Anything further? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Whew. Guys, we're at item 13, notice of motion, new business. Uh, Councillor Lamers indicated that he has something for us at our next meeting. That's good to hear. I look forward to reading that. And uh, nothing further underneath new business, councillors? Seeing none. Uh, bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting. It's always a good bylaw to read at this hour of the night. Bylaw recommendation be it resolved that bylaw number 20-45 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the June 22nd, 2020, Council meeting, be presented and read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed on the 22nd day of June, 2020. A mover and seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Broderick, seconded by Councillor Deneen. You've heard the bylaw, all those in favor? And the motion carries, thank you very much. We have a motion to adjourn. Before we have our adjournment, I just wanna state once again, uh, very happy Canada Day, folks.
it's going to be a little different this year. We're not having the, the big show like we've had in the past. We're not going to do the parades. But I do know that people are going to be decorating their homes and celebrating Canada. And uh, I've already seen people putting flags out on their, on their balconies and things like that. And, uh, uh, you know, around the community, I think it's great. So recognize we do live in a great place, folks. Happy Canada Day to you all. Motion to adjourn. Recommendation be it resolved. The council of the council meeting be adjourned at, what are we at? We're going to call it 8.31 p.m.